Hello everybody, and welcome back to First Snow! Yay! A later stream than usual today, because I was off of the hairdressers getting my hair done. <laughs> but welcome everybody, welcome, welcome! Welcome back to Comfy Cozy Time with women. <laughs> But welcome everybody! Welcome, welcome! I hope everyone's having a good Tuesday so far. It's the start of the week. Well, I guess yesterday was the start of the week, I suppose. It's like the start. I, I feel like all the way up to Wednesday is the start, and then Wednesday's the middle, and then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> but welcome in, everybody! Welcome! Rika, congratulations on the first! You got the first. I, I love that you managed to like post in chat before anything else was set up. Like, I think you may have posted a chat message the second I went live without even like meaning to. <laughs> the first thing that came up. But welcome, welcome, welcome Akire. Thank you for always checking my sound alerts for me. Very alerted. Uh, Grace, no, hello. Thank you for the meow in chat. Welcome, welcome. Elnom, it's lovely to see you too. Welcome, welcome. And Maury, hello. Hi, Lyri time. It's me time. I'm here. <laughs> lovely to see you. Hello, hello. I'm streaming at a slightly more US friendly time today. It's it's not like 6 a.m. on the West Coast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, will, I didn't stream at my normal time today because... I was I was at the hairdressers. I was getting my hair styled, and it feels so nice. It feels so nice. My hair had gotten way too long. It's it's back to chin length now, and it feels good. It feels good. It's so bouncy. <laughs> it's really nice. Ah, oh, the Tuesday's great though. Busy. Oh, hopefully it's like a productive busy. Like, it may be busy, but you're getting lots of stuff done. Kind of busy. But I I hope things ease off for you soon, and you can not be as busy. <laughs> I also cannot believe it's already May. Also, thank you for the dictionary narration to start out with. We got the letter T. T is for Tuesday, and T is also for... That's S. I, <laughs> I, found, I found the pages for T in my dictionary, and then I, I flipped a little bit, and I got a, a word that was like at the end of S instead of T, so... Let me be a bit more careful. All right, T is for Tuesday and also for technology. Okay. Oh, I'm kind of like between technology and techno technocracy. So I'm going to read both of them because why not? Because I, I want to know what technocracy is now. Technocracy, a noun, the plural is technocracies. A social or political system in which scientific or technical experts hold a great deal of power. I see. So when when it's like a society ruled by science and technology, that is a technocracy. Now we know. And then we have the word technology, a noun, the plural is technologies. Uh, one, the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. Two, machinery and equipment developed from such scientific knowledge. Or three, the branch of knowledge concerned with applied sciences. Oh, the origin is Greek. Uh, te technologia? It's from a Greek term, but the Greek term means systematic treatment. I guess that makes sense. Like, technology is very systematic. It's very... Making... Making a machine do something for, an, for a specific result. I guess that makes sense. It is very systematic, but very interesting dictionary to start off with. I like that. <laughs> We're learning. But thank you for the dictionary redeem, and thank you for the headpads too. I love the headpads. Also, I'm really, really sorry. I have some devastating news to share. I already opened my can of monster today. <laughs> because it's already 8pm, and I went out to the hairdressers earlier, so I've already opened my can. So I've only got like half a can of Monster here. It's already open. However, I have a compromise. And I have a can of Sprite. I know it's not the same as Monster, but we can still have the, the ring pull can opening sound. If that is alright. It better be alright because I'm opening it. Why was that? 
I feel like the sprite cans are more violent. The sprite cans are more violent than monster cans. Every single time, it like, I watched my mic volume like peeking into the red. <laughs> like, why, why are the sprite cans so violent? Anyway, th that wasn't even a hydrate redeem. I just wanted to have a sip of my monster, but I had to explain. <laughs> I apologize for letting everyone down in this way, but I really needed. I really needed the monster. But I've still got half a can left. I've, I've got more than half a can left, honestly. There's still quite a lot left in here. Oh, Popo, thank you for the hydrate. Now I have an excuse to have another sip. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have the Ultra Zero can today because it's first snow. So I I was I was going to open a can earlier of like the flavored monster, but then I remembered I was streaming first snow today and I was like, no, I've got to have the white can. I have to have the white can today. I remembered. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate. Oh, and I actually, something I mentioned last time too, but ready for the stream, I remembered I remembered to fill up my squeaky flask. I've got my tea. Oh my goodness, Rika! Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Grey Snow as well. Also, Mogu, hello. Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for the gift sub, Rika. Thank you. I'm gonna have a celebratory sip of tea. Thank you. I actually remembered to fill my, my tea flask this time. Because I mentioned it last time when we were talking about the warm drinks. Although it's kind of funny because um, the temperature's gotten a bit warmer here recently, so hot drinks aren't aren't really what I'm going for at the moment. <laughs> but thankfully it's cooled down a lot this week. Like, the, the weekend was terrible. It was so hot here. I could not function. But thankfully the weather's... it's back down to, like, normal levels this week. And I'm hoping it'll stay like that for a while. I, re <laughs> I really don't want the heat to be sticking around too long. But, uh, yeah, it's much more reasonable at the moment. Which makes me glad. And also, now that I've had my hair cut as well, I've got it, like, fully cut and styled. And it's so much lighter now. And I don't have my hair on the back of my neck anymore making me warm, so it's really nice. Hold on, I actually, um... I actually took a photo to show off my hairstyle. In case anyone was curious, but I think the image might be too big. Let me let me resize that before I put it on the stream. There we go. I I prepared ahead of time because I was like, I want to show off my hair. I got my hair done. It's not the best lighting, so it's not the best like you can't see the color very well, but it's very pink. Trust me. <laughs> but here's my my hair. My hair. Freshly styled today, and it's so it's so bouncy and nice. Look, it looks really yellow in this picture. Everything looks really yellow in this picture. <laughs> it's not this yellow in real life. It's it's just really bad lighting in my room. But my hair is very pink. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I could like color edit it to be more accurate to real life. Hold on, what would happen if I were to? Hmm. Oh, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. Okay, I I edited it. That's that's more like the color in real life. <laughs> I just changed some of the the balance color options a bit. It's more like that in real life. But this is my hair. I got it styled today, and it's so nice. Oh, thank you for the hair change redeem too. That's so funny though, I'd actually changed it to the other hair so it would be closer to my styled one with it being like slightly flicked out, but I guess I'm a I'm allowed to brush my hair out now. I have it all sleek, sleek on the stream and curly wavy in real life. <laughs> but it turned out so nicely. It It was it was very overdue. Like I I'd, I'd not been looking after myself for a while. I needed to I needed to get my hair done. It was it wasn't great. <laughs> But I, I just had a, uh, last week and this week was just dedicated to recoloring my 
my naturally pink hair with um, nothing because I don't need to color it. <laughs> and then getting it styled today, it was really nice. And also my hairdresser is just lovely. But it's so funny because my hairdresser was like, so are you, are you doing your show tonight? <laughs> She forgot the word for streaming, but she still asks me every time. She's like, oh, you're doing your show tonight? I was like, yes, I'm, I'm going to be streaming. <laughs> and it was, it was very sweet. She's a, she's a lovely hairdresser. My hairdresser is so nice. But yeah, I, I still wanted to do the stream today, even though I, I had my hair appointment. So I just figured I'd do an evening one instead. I'll have a comfy evening. I can snuggle up. I was going to say in the dark, but I need the lights on. Otherwise, you can't see me. <laughs> but it was really sweet. Also, Jack, hello, welcome, welcome. And El Castor Candente, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. It's it's very pink. It's very me. <laughs> but I, I always feel so much better when I've had my hair styled. It's, it's just like, not just like having the hair styled, like the whole treatment. I always get so pampered whenever I go to the hairdressers, like... <laughs> It's a full pampering um, treatment. I almost missed this. Is it time for lesbians? <gasps> Hi, Maya! You you did not miss it, though. You're here just in time. You're here perfectly on time. And it is time for lesbians. Welcome. Thank you for the 17-month resub. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. You just missed me talking about uh, how I had my, my, my hair styled today. I went to the hairdressers. I got my hair done. I'm feeling snazzy. <laughs> But it, it really makes me feel so bright. Like, I just spend the afternoon being pampered. And then Xander cooked dinner tonight. And I made myself a flask of tea. I'm just sitting down, ready for comfy stream time. It's been a really good Tuesday. I also got a bunch of work done that I've I've been slightly putting off. So it's it's been a really, really good day for me. <laughs> And I'm excited to, to play more of this too, because we're just at Act 3 now. It's taken a while. It's definitely taken me a while to uh, to play the game. I'm a little slow because I keep talking about everything, but I feel like that's the experience here. We are here for a slow time. We are here to relax. There's no rushing. We don't need to rush. We just I just go at my own pace and it's very nice. But yeah, I am a little bit tired, so it might be even slower than usual today. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe because I am tired, I will play more of the game. <laughs> because I'll, I'll be focusing on the game and not chatting about everything. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> am I ready for the big show? Do I know all my lines? Do I have my props? Oh no, the monster's already open. It's okay, we can work around it. What if I just down the can and open another? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that in the evening. Or any time. I think one monster a day is enough. <laughs> but no, I'm ready for the show. I know all of my lines because there aren't any. <laughs> oh, actually, thinking about it in like a show sense, this is the nicest show because I don't have to remember my lines. They're all written out for me in the game. <laughs> I just have to read what's on the screen. It's great. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited to play more of this because I'm genuinely amazed at how much content there is here. Like I was, there have already been two different moments where I was expecting the game to just end and it hasn't. There's more content. So the, like the fact that this is free is so incredible to me. It's, it's really good. It's really good. And it makes me even more excited for Twofold as well. <laughs> I'm I'm so excited. But yes, it is first snow time. <laughs> Reading my lines as cheating. No, it's not. It's only cheating if I'm on stage. There's no stage here. It's just me with a comfy blanket. <laughs> oh, now I no, now I'm just thinking like it's like reading a storybook. Like, I'm getting everyone to gather around me, just like, gather around, it's it's time for a story. <laughs> this story is about lesbians. <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm excited 
because we finished up here. We're at nine and a half hours of um, gameplay. I've streamed this for about 12 hours and I'm pretty sure a good couple of hours of this is just me talking about stuff as well. So this isn't an accurate playtime count. But either way, it's still like I, I would pay money for this length of game. Like, <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a buy merchandise to support them afterwards. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you actually had a video on your TikTok for you page the other day teaching people how to shotgun a cannon monster. <laughs> I guess I could shotgun a cannon monster. I know how to do it. I know how to do it from back when I was a, a rowdy young adult at parties with beer. <laughs> I feel like it would just be the same thing, right? Stab, hold, open, yeah? Maybe? Who knows? I don't think I'd want to, though. I don't want to shotgun a can of monster. I want to enjoy the taste of it. <laughs> In the narrator's voice. This is the story of a couple named lesbians. I'm I'm really excited though. I'm guessing that we're we're gonna be we're gonna be heading to Eileen's parents, I guess. Eileen's family. If we're on the interstate, that's what I'm presuming. I'm guessing the interstate is the road. <laughs> Me here an ignorant Brit like, is that the motorway? <laughs> think it is. Uh, uh, for a second you forgot what shotgun was it though. <laughs> oh, like a like a, a large shotgun. Like, just blast a can. That would just waste all of the monster. That would be so bad. Also, Suzume, hello! Welcome, welcome! You're not late. You're not late at all. I haven't even loaded the game yet. Don't worry. Welcome, welcome! How did haircut go? It went really well. Wait, I already deleted the image. Hold on, let me get it back a second. Let me show you my haircut. Ba, 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 ba. Got my hair did. Got my hair done. Hee <laughs> hee. This still isn't like super fully color accurate. I, I tried my best with the tools I had. But yes, my hair's been restyled and recut and it's so bouncy. It's so bouncy now as well. I love it. Bouncy, bouncy. Uh, wow, did I get new glasses? No, no. I've got the same glasses I always have, but I'm, I'm not wearing glasses in this picture. If you're seeing there, that's like... If you're seeing the bit underneath my hair, that's like the outline of my face, I think. <laughs> I took my glasses off for the photo. But I blocked my face out anyway. Because I'm just virtual. Is the giant pink blob not glasses? No, that is, that is simply... Uh, you're not allowed to see this. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm, it's, it's really nice. I like, I like having my hair done. It always makes me feel so, so special afterwards. I'm just being pampered, being looked after, with my my lovely hairdresser who always asks how my streaming's going. It's, it's genuinely the sweetest thing because every time I talk to her, I can tell she has no idea what I'm talking about, but she's so enthusiastic about it either way. She's just there like, I don't know what you're saying, but I can see that you love it and I love that. <laughs> and that's the kind of energy I love. I'm, it's so good. Uh, that's actually Tiffy used for censorship. She just took a different color. Yes, it's, that is the, um, the censorship Tiffy. She painted it for me. She's such a good cat. But yes, anyway, I am, so excited to play more of this. I don't know how long Act 3 is going to be, because Act 1, I think... I think I did Act 1 in one stream. Yeah, I think I did Act 1 in one stream, and then Act 2 was really long. And took me like... No, I think it was like a stream and a half for both of them, maybe. And now we're going into Act 3. I don't know how long it is. We'll just see how it goes. We will see how it goes. If I'm getting close to the end at the four hour mark, then uh, I might just keep going, depending how much game is left. <laughs> I may just keep going until I'm done. But if there's still quite a bit of game left, I'll carry on next week. And then also start twofold, I, I guess. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to play more of this. I love this game. I love it so much. Where's my cursor? Here's my cursor. Let us proceed. Now we know that Allison is growing in confidence. Ba ba ba. <laughs> Susan, my... So my brother and I had a giant reunion six months after we felled an eldritch horror. <laughs> so that's yeah, great. I'm so happy for you. No, I, I, I don't, I'm never like going that far into specifics. But she did seem very surprised when I said that we just finished a game we've been playing for eight months. She was like, Is, d do you usually play games for that long? And I, <laughs> I was like, no, this was, this was a special case. It was a very long game and we only play once a week. <laughs> but it was, it was funny. And she was like, so the next game you're playing, is that going to be very different? And I was like, no. <laughs> um, we may be playing another long form game in the same style. Le -he -he -te -he. If anyone's seen the schedule and recognizes the sticker, you'll know what we're going to be playing next. <laughs> but I'm excited for that too. But it's just really sweet. She's just an absolute sweetheart. And she always does my hair so nicely. Like I'm, every time I come out of the hairdressers, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, skipping. I'm skipping down the road. <laughs> I have like such a bounce in my step, like my hair bouncing, just like ah, oh, I feel so light and free and bouncy. So yeah, that's really nice. So I'm feeling really good today, and I've got a flask of tea. I've got half a can of Monster. We've got a game with. And beautiful women <laughs> and I think we're gonna be starting with the start of the holidays I think Allison's going to meet Eileen's family and I really hope she doesn't try and quote-unquote fix their relationship because that would be really awkward <laughs> Man, eight months imagine finishing a game in that short a time no, honestly, if if I didn't have the streaming schedule to go with me, I'm I'm either the exact same, I will take forever to just do one game, or I will start playing a game and that is just my existence and nothing else happens. And it's not good. <laughs> Cause like when Baldur's Gate 3 came out, I started playing that. And then I, I basically just let it consume my life and I, I, I kind of just didn't do anything else. Mind you, last September was a really tough time for me, so I'm I'm cutting myself some slack in allowing myself to just to just become Baldur's Gate three for a bit. <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of games where I, I keep like meaning to play them, and I just don't have time to. So that's that's part of why I like streaming too, though, because not only do I get to play all of the games on my list of things I want to check out, but I get to have company while I do it too, which makes it. It always makes it so much more fun. <laughs> it's really nice. I, I love, especially games like this, like games with a really good story. I love getting to discuss things with people. I love when we're all just chatting about something that's happened in a game. Those are like the moments I love the most. <laughs> but yes, without further ado, let's not spend an hour chatting before I start the game for once. <laughs> And let's get right back into it. Here we go. Oh. Right, right into it. One thing I hadn't counted on when asking Eileen if I could come over was how large the distances involved were. I'm already feeling the difference from home. Colorado and Utah might be right next to each other on a map, but all to be seen between them are vast plains of utterly nothing. See, this is part of America that I cannot relate to. Like, everything in the UK is so, like, clustered together. You don't really get, like, the spans of nothingness. Like, occasionally there will be moments of countryside where it seems like there's nothingness, but it never lasts for more than half an hour, and then you're back at civilization again. <laughs> but the US is so big. It's so large. I remember seeing something that was just like, Hey, did you know 
look look how much of Europe you can fit just into Texas. And I was just like, whoa, that's the, that's that's a big state. I live in a small country. Here we go. With noon approaching and little else around for miles as we motored down the endless strip of tarmac, Rose made the executive decision to chance this place for some lunch. Ooh. Random diner? A random diner on the freeway? I hope I'm using these terms right. I'm, <laughs> I'm just here like, howdy! We're off down the, the freeway, going on vacation, checking out the local diner. <laughs> when we get there, I'll have to make sure I stay on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know. I need to stop. I need to stop. See, this is why I don't do late night streams. I'm, I start out in this state. I just start saying words and... I really probably shouldn't. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'll just have some more monster. I, I cannot do an American accent. The, the, the only time I can really do an American accent that doesn't just sound like a horrific parody is like when I do like my half uwu voice and I just become valley girl. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that happens, but that's like the only halfway decent American accent I can do. It's like when I'm like so like this and then it's like, I don't know what I'm saying, but it's, it sounds kind of, kind of not British, if you know what I mean. It's, I, I don't, <laughs> don't know why I do that. It's like even when I'm uwu voicing too, like I will say can't as can't, can't, which I, I really can't do normally. It just sounds wrong. But I'll go like, oh, I can't do that. But then, but then I'll be like this, and I'll be like, I can't do that. Like I, I just can't. <laughs> I, I can't. I, it's, it feels weirder. I don't get it. I don't know why it feels different, but it really does. It feels like I'm just becoming a different voice. <laughs> anyway, fingers crossed. This is a nice diner. It's a little chintzy for my tastes, the faux 50s interior decorated with a mishmash of cheap Americana, but Rose is in her element as she stuffs down another hunk of meat. At least it's quiet beyond the cheerful music, given we have the diner to ourselves. I had barely slept all night, not only at the prospect of seeing Eileen's home, but at this being my first trip so far from my own. Right now, though, I'm just gonna hydrate. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate, Suzume. Thank you. Let's have some of my monster. And you know what? I think I'll have some tea as well. Since I have it. Oh, it's so nice having warm tea. <laughs> I'm so glad I remembered, because I almost forgot to make my tea before the stream. Because it's something I talked about last week. I was like, I must remember to make tea next time I play this. And it was like 20 to 8, and I suddenly realized I, I didn't make my tea, so I quickly ran downstairs and made myself some. <laughs> and filled my flask up. I also filled it up with a lot of cold water, because otherwise it would be too hot. Because the flask is really good at keeping the heat. But I managed to make it like the perfect temperature, so that's very nice. Right, right now though, I'm just glad to be free of the motorbike's vibration and noise. I've finally become used to the odd short trip around the city, but this road trip is something else entirely. Is she going to a different state on a motorbike? Allison, wow. Wait, and Rose agreed to this too? I guess, did Rose want to go visit Colorado too? I guess? Interesting. Still getting your back legs, huh? Hee <laughs> hee. What is she? What's she even eating? Is that just like a giant pile of nachos? What? What? What does she have? What are you eating? There's a lot of food there. Yeah, it it, it looks kind of nacho-ish. I guess I'll find out soon. But I, I love the, the difference between their meals here. Like, over here, just steak. 
steak and a coffee, I'm presuming. And over here we've got this mountain of majesty. <laughs> yeah, the tiny flag is essential. It is. It is. It wouldn't be the... I wouldn't... I don't think I would have commented on it if it didn't have the tiny flag on top. <laughs> but yeah, I'm wondering what it is. Because, like, it could be ketchup. Could I have ketchup on it? Maybe cheese? Yeah, maybe, like, cheese and ketchup. Oh, like, cheesy chips. Oh, uh, uh, fries. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, cheesy chips are so nice. It's been four hours. <sighs> Give me a break. Oh. Three more to go. Seven hour journey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I would have motorcycled for that. She digs in once more as I groan and try to swing my legs back to life. Man, the stakes here are amazing! Mm. You're missing out. I'm glad she's having a good time. I think I'll be fine. Yes! I take a sip of my milkshake while gauging how best to tackle the huge plate of steaming nachos before me, buried in cheese, sauce, and sour cream. Yes! I, I figured it out! Oh, I'm so proud. The jalapenos are carefully picked off and sitting to the side. Oh, that's what the... Ah. Uh, I would do the same. I would do the same. The jalapenos are carefully picked off and sitting to the side. Big mood. Big mood, Alison. <gasps> it's snowing! Oh! I was gonna say that's so nice. Is is it really nice if they've got three hours on a motorbike? Uh, um, there's not much to see out here as I glance out the window. Just an endless plain stretching out to the horizon. An enthusiastic welcome sign at the otherwise invisible border being all that indicated we'd entered a different state. Oh, so I guess they're in Colorado now. I'm not sure what I expected, really. I know there are no rivers or anything defining the border, but it's a different thing to see that for yourself. It's just so arbitrary. A line on a map, nothing more. Far from being any sort of revelation, it just makes me feel rather silly about being so sheltered. This all probably barely registered to Eileen as she drove along the lonely highway. Rose picks up her phone to check the address I gave her once again, forcing down the current chunk of steak she's eating with a giant gulp. Mm, still have a while to go, huh? If it's as close to the big city as you've said, we shouldn't have a problem finding the place. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, she's never told you anything about her home? Her family? She said they don't get along great. Right? She mentioned her sister once. She scratches the back of her head as she thinks. I don't mean to pry, but I still don't get why she'd come all the way from outside the state to live in Utah. Not that I have anything against the place, I do like it, but it's not exactly where I choose if I were her. Hmm. I don't know anything about Utah. I don't know anything about like most of the US states, to be honest. <laughs> I know I know that Florida is where Florida man lives. <laughs> oh, what else do I know? I know I know I know. Texas is in the south. I, I can recognize Texas on a map. I can recognize California on a map. I can recognize Florida, Hawaii, Alaska. I think that's probably all I'd be able to point out confidently. Everything else would be a guess if, if I had to like name states on a map. Those are the only ones I'd be confident with. <laughs> I know a lot of the names of them. I just don't know whereabouts they are. <laughs> Like, I think if I was just asked to name the states, I would get at least half, I think. But if you ask me whereabouts they are, I'd, I'd, I'd be guessing. I'd be fully guessing. <laughs> no, it's like, I'm trying to think now. Do I know... Do I know where any other states are? 
Oh, I know where Rhode Island is. What else do I know? Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to point out where the others are. I think I might be able to say, like, vaguely, like, East Coast, Central, West Coast-ish for some of them. <laughs> like, I, I know New York is East Coast. It's more, more Eastern, and then California's West Coast. Bottom of the West Coast. But I'm, 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 I don't know. I think me naming US states would be the same as the average US person trying to point out countries in Europe on a map. <laughs> I'd be much better at that. Give me a Europe map. I'd be able to name most of them, I'm pretty sure. But, no, I don't, I don't know US states. Yeah, so many of them are just rectangles. That's what makes it so hard. Like you'll you'll see it's like it's like three straight lines and then a jagged top and it's like which state is this? It's one in the middle. I'm like I don't know. Um Ohio, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I feel like I should learn more. Maybe one day I will just like study all of the US states just for like a funny bit like I'll do a stream like haha let's name all the US states I bet I can't get any and then I just get it flawlessly perfect <laughs> no that's that's too much energy I couldn't do that but yeah I, I mostly I mostly know the names of them not whereabouts they are but I don't think I'd be too far off I'm guessing some I don't know I don't know, I'd have to try it sometime. I'm genuinely curious now. Anyway, I, I got distracted again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Coming here just for a community college? That's the part that gets me. Uh, maybe it was, maybe it was just uh, the next state over, pick, p put a dart in a map, just be like, yeah, I'll go here. I'm not exactly an artist, but from what you've said, she could probably get a scholarship at a proper college. Sounds like she could probably afford tuition even with that one. Ooh. That is true. She seems okay for money. The mystery of Eileen. Barter at Palo! <laughs> Check out Satera for learning them. Oh, I'll have to look that up afterwards. Thank you. A way to learn the states. It's okay, I'm, I'm gonna educate myself. It feels kind of bad because I have so many friends who live in the US in different places and I probably wouldn't be able to point out where they live. <laughs> I'd be like, well, hold on, you're, you're, you're an EST, so you're gonna be in this part of the map. And then I just wave my hand at a third of the US. <laughs> uh, oh, I also know, uh, mountain time as well, the the tiny little strip of mountain time. I'd be able to narrow down those states pretty well, because there's not as much in mountain time versus the other time zones. <laughs> Rose looks to me for answers, but I have none. When she puts it that way, there are vast stretches of Eileen's past that are total black spots to me. She leaves me to stew a little as we eat our respective meals, piping up again as she chews. Remember when you asked me about my family a few weeks ago? And I blew you off? I feel like I should probably explain that. Oh, we're getting Rose backstory. Yes. Not to get too deep into things, I ended up cutting ties with my mom and pop. Given what my family was like, I wanted to have a clean break from them. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Um... I'm sorry for bringing it up. I've made peace with it, don't worry. My point is... Failing to remember, she starts circling her fork in the air. That's the point. Like, the point is, you know... <laughs> Holy shrimp, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in, I was just talking about how I don't know any of the US states. <laughs> welcome! Happy Tuesday! Twofold Tuesday! Except I haven't gotten to twofold yet. I'm still on first snow. <laughs> the 
point of all this was... Yeah? Right, Eileen. Yes. I'm just saying that there might be a reason she's cagey about her personal life. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. My nod earns a comforting grin. You're a good kid, Allison. I'm sure you'll do fine. In fact, you even taught me a little something. Oh? To be honest, I expected to be mothering you around when you first arrived to live with me. That you were some kid I already knew everything about. Who I'd be left teaching adult life to. Yeah, I was kind of wrong there. Hey. But you've helped me so much. I couldn't have managed without you around. Oh, that must be such a compliment to Allison, too. <gasps> Zarok, hello. Thank you for the posture check, hydrate, tetromino to the face. And we have a big stretch. I'm gonna have a big stretch and a sip of my tea. <laughs> Limiting the monster. <laughs> have the warm tea first. Because it's comforting. But welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. Later stream than usual, but... That that might work out better for you time wise. Time uh, time zone wise. Does it, maybe? I'm not sure what time is it for you. <laughs> that's how Talus Principle makes you feel. Oh, Tetromino to the face, yeah, that's that's why I added them. There there <laughs> Just throws the Tetromino in your face and you'll solve this. Yes, um in typing those messages you've also found some more of my secret keywords to drop them on my head. <laughs> but thank you. Welcome, welcome. But I love Talos. I'm so excited at the moment. Uh, the, the Talos Principal Twitter account tweeted a mysterious video the other day. And I think it might be DLC. I'm really hoping it's DLC. I'm, I'm craving DLC. But even if it's not, it is something Talos related. And whatever it is, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. I I love that series so much. <laughs> oh, I lo I love the Talos Principle so much. Although now I feel a little bit guilty because um, I'm pretty sure the reason I didn't get around to playing this game in December like I meant to was because Talos Two came out, and that kind of um, consumed my life when that was released. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry for snow. I'm so sorry, but it's okay because it worked out well because now I can keep keep playing first snow and go straight into twofold and it'll keep going for a while. <laughs> uh, oh, 5 a.m. for you. Ah, oh, well, it's, I mean, it's closer to morning, I guess. Yeah, I feel like a lot of my stream times are rather unfortunate. I've, time zones are so painful. I, I feel like a lot of my friends, like, I have a lot of friends who are in, like, Pacific time and usually do, like, Pacific time streams. So their streams will usually start for me any time between 1am and 4am. And I always, I always end up missing them, except for when I have insomnia. And then I catch all of them because I can't sleep. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's DLC. Uh, did I hear that new Twofold stuff dropped on Mother's Day? I saw! I saw that! I I noticed it! I, I didn't look too deeply into it because I was like, that is something I'll bookmark for once I've played Twofold. But I love that. I love that so much. Uh, oh, woke up at 11pm, so resetting your sleep a bit. Uh -huh. Oh, it's it's always so awkward when you have to, like skew your sleep schedule around a little bit. I'm I'm really bad at that. <laughs> I'm really bad at like falling asleep too early and then I wake up at 1am and I'm like, well, this isn't great because I'm going to be tired all day tomorrow. <laughs> it's the hardest to fix. Also sleepy but watching streams. Hello. Welcome, welcome. It's okay. I'm always sleepy as well. Welcome in. Welcome to first snow time. Featuring me talking about random things a lot as well. It's a very slow-paced experience here. I hope you like it, but welcome. Yeah, it's big spoilers. Yeah, I guessed it would be. 
I saw a thing that was just like uh, based on the the post game twofold, and I was like, I'm not, I've read enough. I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna look at that. <laughs> Oh help! You made your account ages ago. Don't know how to change the name. Oh my goodness, I, I don't know if I do either. I guess it would be somewhere in the settings. But I like that username. I don't think you need to change it. I think it's a good one. <laughs> it's very relatable. But yes, welcome in. Welcome to story time. Story time. I've got my blankets. I've got my warm tea. We've got our comfy game. And I feel like what Rose just said as well must be such a compliment for Alison because she's been here the whole time. Like, I don't feel like I know how to be an adult. I am I feel like I don't know how to do anything. So to have Rose being like, well, I expected you to not know how to be an adult, but actually you were remarkably good at it. That's It's got to be so affirming. It's got to be so good. But yeah, in the settings. Oh, it glitches when you try. Oh, no. I guess Destiny has spoken for you. That's your username now. But uh, what game is this? I'm currently playing First Snow. It's a Yuri visual novel made by Salty Salty Studios. Is it Salty Salty? I really hope I'm not getting it wrong. But uh, this is the prequel to a visual novel called Twofold, which is a game I really want to play, but I wanted to play the prequel before I play the, the full game. And this is actually a free prequel. You can play this for free on Steam. You can just download it without paying anything. And it's really, it's so solid. It's free. Like, I can't believe how much content there is for a free game. But it is, every single time I've been playing this, my, my cheeks are sore from smiling. <laughs> I just, this game just makes me smile so much. Yuri mentioned, oh yeah, this is, it's Yuri time. I do like my Yuri. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is Alison and she's on a road trip at the moment to go visit her new girlfriend for the holidays and meet her family. But yes, it, uh, published by Studio Elan, who do a lot of Yuri visual novels and are also the studio which my VTuber group is attached to, Verpro. <laughs> I say I say my VTuber group. Uh, Verpro was a thing before I was part of it, but I managed to sneak my way. <laughs> I just showed up one day and I was like, "Hey, anyone want a stray cat in here?" And now I'm part of the group, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. Oh, me too. I love cute love games too. I. I really love like a, a good feel good story like a story that just makes you feel warm inside that's that's my favorite I'm, I'm here for the fluffy times i do like darker things too but i feel like there's a, there's a time and a place for everything like if i'm playing a darker game i know i'm in the mood for a darker game when i'm playing like a comfy comfy casual type game i know where to go i know what to look for <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> Rika, yes, Rika, yes, Verpro got hit by the cat distribution system. It just happened. It's like, it mostly happened because I'm really, really good friends with Addie Rosa, who did my model art. She did all of the art for my character. She made my logo for me. She does most of my art for me, except for the emotes, which are done by Ghost Aficionado. But uh, she is, she's a staff member at Studio Elan. So I kind of like wormed my way in through her, like because I'm really good friends with her. I was, I just snuck along like, hey, hello. Hi, I'm a VTuber, hi. <laughs> but her art is so gorgeous. I really love her art and I'm, I, like she doesn't usually do VTuber art as well. So th th this was like a mate's deal. She was like, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out for you. I don't know what I'm doing. If you're fine with that, then okay. And I've, 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 she knocked it out of the park. It's perfect. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Well, I'll be more perfect when I'm re-rigged, but, uh, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the follow as well. I'm glad you're enjoying your time here. But yeah, our Salty Salty Studio was apparently formed solely for the creation of Twofold. Most of the, the group scattered after Twofold was finished. Oh, that's interesting. 
I know that Twofold was a, it was a project for a long time. Like it's it's been like a, a long running project. So the fact that like they, they got it released, I remember seeing when it was released, like how just genuinely happy everyone was that the project hadn't like faded into obscurity, that it actually got made and so well as well. Like I've, I've heard amazing things about it. And that makes me very happy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think like people have just been like adopted under the Elan umbrella. It's just like, come here, come under the Yuri umbrella with us. We have beautiful women. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been really lucky. Like I've, I've had a few glow ups along the way as well. Like this isn't the model I started with. I've had some upgrades, <laughs> but it's been it's been really nice. And she's just she's just a really good friend as well as an amazing artist. So I I got lucky. I got very lucky. <laughs> Although it's also really funny because like she'll try and like gift me things, but she forgets that I have her PayPal details, so I <laughs> so I pay her. And I can tip her more. She'll be like, okay, I'll do you this with mates rates, you get a discount. And I'm like, oh thank you so much. I'll leave a really good tip. <laughs> It's a, I saw a meme that was just like, being being friends with someone is just like the same $10 bill being passed around. And it's exactly that. It's <laughs> it's, but it's nice as well, because it means we have each other in like our best interests. Like <laughs> We treat each other. I'll be like, well, well, this is the, the gift from Addie. So I, I can't waste that on bills. I've got to buy something nice with it. So it makes me treat myself. But yeah, it's I'm I'm very lucky, and I feel so glad to be part of Verpro too because like everyone else in Verpro is so cool. I've made some really amazing friends through it, and it actually, I I promise I will get back to the game in a second. But actually, while I'm at it, let me just let me just do a cheeky little shout out very quickly to the lovely Sylphie who is doing a donothon at the end of this week because they're moving out and that's a lot of stress and money. So they're doing a donothon and I'm going to join them on their stream on Friday. After my own stream, I'm going to I'm going to finish the family Friday stream. I'm going to have dinner and then I'm going to hop back on and be like, "Hi." <laughs> it's going to be a fun Friday. But yes, what what if I just shout out all the Verpro members now? Hold on, I need to remember. Mia, Mia changed her username. Yes. There we go. Yeah, Mia. Mia just has the username Mia Sova now, because she's very cool and partnered. But Mia has also been doing it. She's been doing a subathon recently as well to celebrate her two-year anniversary, and she released a song recently, which is. It's so good, and I'm gonna link it now. I'm I'm just in promotion time now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. Bum bum bum. Let me get the video here. Check this out. She knocked it out of the park. She completely rocked it. It's really really good. Check it out. But also keep my stream on, please. <laughs> But she released her first cover and it's really, really good. And so she's been doing a lot of celebrations. She's been kind of attacked by allergies too, but she's incredibly cool. And then we've got... And now we do a shout out for Momo! Momoka! Who is a magical cow VTuber. She is such a sweetheart. I love Momo so much. She's just so lovely and bright and her streams always make me smile. <laughs> like she's been recently, she was like finishing Red Dead Redemption 2 and it's like that game is so dark and gritty and I'm still there the whole time just smiling because she's so bright and sweet. <laughs> she's lovely. She's really lovely. And... Right, do, oh, does Geist have... Does Geist have an underscore? 
I, I don't remember everyone's usernames. This is so bad. Da, da, da. No, no. Oh, it's. I think it's Twitter that's the underscore. And then there's Geist. Geist, who is very, very cool. Oh, no. No, I missed Geist's Cube Escape stream. No, I've got to watch the VOD of that. Oh, no. <laughs> but Geist is really cool and also starting streaming with a model that's also drawn and rigged by Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie also did uh, Momoka's model as well. So everyone is just like really cool and multi-talented and just like incredible in every way. And then I wandered in like, sup, hi. You need a cat in here, hi. <laughs> but it's been really nice. It's, it's so fun, everyone's very cool. Please check them all out there. Very cool people. Ba ba ba. I don't know how big the the cooldown is for like the the Twitch shoutouts, but you can click through on the links anyway. <laughs> but yes, that's it. Uh, self. Uh, I was gonna say self promotion. <laughs> this isn't self promotion. I'm promoting other people. I guess it kind of is self promotion in a way. Like I'm part of Verpro and I'm promoting Verpro, so it's it kind of is. But okay, promotion corner's over now. I just, I just know a lot of really cool people. And I appreciate them all the time. Please check them out. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> yeah, and I know Mia's voice is so good. It's so good. I'm, I, it's, it, it's making me pumped up to do my first cover too, because I've, I've been meaning to release a proper song cover for like for three years now. <laughs> it's been it's it's probably been three years now. I've been working on so many things and I haven't finished them. And I wanna I wanna release something. So that's gonna be my my goal for the summer. I'm I'm not leaving this summer without releasing something. If it ends up being the worst quality thing in the world, then so be it. But I'm going to release something. This is my solemn vow. But yes, anyway, back to the game. It's like I only stopped as well to say that Alison should feel like so proud that Rose is proud of her. You've surprised me so much. You make me rethink how much I know about the world and other folks as an adult. I got a little arrogant without even realizing it. And you brought me down to earth. No. <laughs> I thought adulthood was about knowing everything, but it's actually about admitting how much you don't know. I wanted to thank you for teaching me that. That is so true. Oh my goodness. When I, when I was a late teen, I was like, oh, I'm gonna know everything by my thirties. And now now that I'm older, I'm just like, I'm, I don't know anything and I'm never going to know anything, but that's okay. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, you believe I should? Well, I, I have to. I do, I, I have lots of ideas. I actually have a lot of things that I've like started and just not finished. So really, I, ju I just have to finish one of those things. That's all I gotta do. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be the, the year of completing things. Things I've been leaving in limbo. But oh, I love this. Satisfied with her explanation, Rose quickly gets back to her precious steak. Left in thought, I get back to my own food. Oh wait, you're not gonna sort your life out by 30? By 30, hopefully you will realize you don't have to sort your life out. Nobody has a sorted out life, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. <laughs> it's actually nice not having to worry about sorting your life out. Just being like, well, life comes at you in unexpected ways. So you don't have to try and figure it out. Just go with the flow. It's <laughs> it's way less pressure. <laughs> oh, I thought knowing stuff would be easy, but now you struggle with taking care of a plant. Oh, well, I, w I, I can't do that either. I am so bad with plants. I have the opposite of a green thumb. I can't look after plants. I'm, I'm, I'm okay at looking after a cat, though. Well, a cat and a half, I guess. I'm, I'm kind of looking after myself as well. <laughs> But yeah, it's, I don't know, it's so funny thinking back on how, like, when I was younger, I thought 30 was like, those are like old adults. That's like an old adult age. 
and then I hit 30 and I was like, well, I, I, wait, I just, I just doubted my age. Uh, <laughs> um, now you know I've hit 30. <laughs> I'm not saying when, but like I hit 30 and I was just like, I, I don't, I don't feel like an adult yet still. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm not ready to be an adult yet. I'm, I, I, I'm no good. I'm, I'm still, I'm still a baby. I'm still a little baby. Cat mentioned. Yes, I, I have a cat called Tiffany. She's uh she's turning twelve years old this year. She's getting so old. My old girl, but she's still a baby. She's always a baby. Wait, I think I I can still show a picture of her. I think she's still my my censorship thing. Let me get my censorship Tiffy up. There she is. <laughs> Tiffany is here in case things need to be censored, like um hand holding. Very scary moments. But she's so good. Ha! Ah, she's a good girl. Left in thought, I get back to my own food. I didn't realize I could have such an impact on another's life, let alone Rose's. I looked up to her so much that I forgot we're just muddling through life together. Eileen's lived so much of her life in a solitary manner that maybe opening up to me isn't as easy. Maybe she just doesn't want to, given her past experiences. Aline is sad. This trip's probably a good thing. It'll push you out of your own comfort zone a little. Yeah, and I, th I think I think Allison does need that. Like sh she needs to experience more. I think. Yeah, adult with an anime cat girl model and snowflake blanket this is exactly where i want to be in my life <laughs> this is tell if, if i told me as a five-year-old that this is what i would be doing when i grow up i'd just be like oh, i'm living the best life in the world <laughs> you've already oh, I skipped you've line. already grown in the time i've been bunking with you just hang in there right oh thanks I will. Oh, I love them so much. Oh. Atta girl. Sharing a smile, we get back to our food. <laughs> I'm what you aspire to be. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. If I can become a pink-haired cat girl, then so can you if you want. <laughs> but yeah, they're so sweet. I feel like they have like a really sisterly relationship, and I really love that. Of all the people I might have ended up with as a roommate, someone like Rose was among the last I expected. Maybe she's just the sort of person who was best for me. Yeah. There we go, high speed, go on a short but sweet road trip. <laughs> it says short, um... It would have been much shorter if I hadn't gone distracted. <laughs> The two of us find ourselves in a surprisingly quaint little corner of America. A heavily forested town with snow-covered pines visible no matter which direction you look. Wood seems to be the norm for building around here, rather than concrete. I find it quite charming, actually. I was worried I'd be awkwardly roaming through some manicured slice of suburbia, but this feels closer to a friendly country town. Almost something from one of Eileen's westerns. Oh, maybe that's why she likes them. Just give me a call the day before you want to come back, all right? Oh, thank you, Rose. I will. Thanks again for all this. I know it's a really long way. Don't worry. It's a nice ride out to here anyway. Might stick around a bit before heading back. Yeah. Don't know if short's the right word there. Wasn't it four hours? Yeah, four hours to the diner and then another three hours to where they needed to get to. So it was a seven hour. <laughs> seven hour trip on a motorbike. So, not that short. But I guess it's, it's like in game terms. <laughs> yeah, that's a short trip. See, like, seven hours to me, I'm just like, that's... That is the kind of trip that is like an all-day thing. And you don't plan anything else. Like, the, the plan is the trip. I wouldn't be able to, like, do anything after that. But yeah, in, in America, like, everything is so spaced out. It takes so long to, to travel. 
Especially between states. Like, the states are so big. As she walks back to her bike, she stops and turns around once more, raising her hand in farewell. If you ever want to give me a call, go ahead. It's no problem. Oh, thank you. I'll be seeing you, Allison. Bye, Rose. Thanks for everything. She beams a smile as she gets back on her bike, fitting her helmet before kicking back the stand. With a flick of her wrist and press of her foot, her bike roars to life, Rose sailing off down the road and around the corner out of sight. I do my best to appear natural as I turn to the house before me, duffel bag of clothes slung over my shoulder. That's a, that's a, that, that house looks really fancy. <laughs> I'd be so intimidated standing outside a house that looks like that. That looks like a really fancy house. <laughs> My house is like, um, cut it off here. And that's, that's like the size of my house. <laughs> ah. The scenery around here is nice and there's hardly a crowd. In fact, I'm the only person around at all. Oh, is it just her living there? No, this is where Eileen's family lives. So it it is a family home, so it makes sense it would be bigger. But yeah, it, it looks very big to me. Wow. Oh, wait, you once went halfway across the country from eastern US to California. It was full of 10 to 12 hour trips. Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine that. See, over here in the UK, it's like three hours is like too long for a day trip. <laughs> Over here, it's like, if, if you go in, like, three hours or something, that's an overnight trip, at least. Like... <laughs> oh, wow. That's... Three words. Highway Blossom soundtrack? Oh, that's the perfect road trip music! The visual novel about a road trip. That's... that's perfect. <laughs> but yeah, I'm... I, I would feel so exhausted with that much travel. I, I wouldn't be able to, like, frequently do that. Huh. Now that I get a good look at it, Eileen's house sure is big. My eyes slowly scan around as I slowly make my way down the front garden path, taking in every detail. I guess being outside the city would make bigger houses a little more affordable. That's very true. Very true. It's easier to have a a big house that's like out in the middle of nowhere versus a big house in the middle of a city. It's gonna be way more expensive. But ah, uh, oh, Mook, hello. Having driven in both the US and UK, you'd say UK driving is more tiring. Yeah, too many other cars, too many weird interchanges that require a lot of attention. Yeah, I think. Longer trips would be easier in the US because there's a lot of driving that's just like you just go down a road. So you don't have to like put too much thought into it. Whereas in the UK, because a lot of roads were made like a very, very long time ago, they're not made for like optimal get from point A to point B. There's a lot of like curvy roads and a lot of roads that don't make like a lot of sense for travel, really. So it's a lot more awkward to travel. Like, if you drive for the same amount of time, I can guarantee that in the UK you won't have traveled as far as you would if you're in the US. Like, it's it takes a lot longer. There's a lot of busy roads. There's a lot of traffic lights. There's a lot of roundabouts. Even on the motorway, there's loads of lorries everywhere. Sometimes there'll be holdups. You just gotta wait. <laughs> The random vine boom, just be like, what did I just reveal? <laughs> but yeah, this is a really nice house. With a gulp, I gingerly press the doorbell beside the solid oaken door, quickly brushing my clothes with my hands afterwards to look as presentable as possible. Even as muffled footsteps approach, I'm trying to flick a little snow from my hair. Oh, there she is. There she is. As Eileen opens the door, I'm greeted by a warm smile. That reflexive reaction at the sight of me makes me feel better already. Oh. 
I love the, the, oh, I love these two so much. I love them. I love them so much. Oh, all of that makes you wish we'd be funding teleportation. Honestly, I... If I could have any form of magic, I think I would say teleportation. Like, instantly. There's no other magic I would want. I'd want teleportation. Safe teleportation, preferably. But yes. Uh, never heard anyone say gingerly. Oh, I... I've heard it said a lot. I feel like it's like... It's something I've definitely heard a fair bit. It's a nice term. It's it's very very delicate term. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love when she smiles. Whenever I see Eileen smile, it's like, it's so rare to see because of how stoic she usually is. But every time she smiles, I'm just like, oh, hi, hello. Fancy seeing you here. Surprise. <laughs> I made it in the end. Enjoy the bike ride? Yeah, it was great. It was wonderful, I can imagine. I don't think I managed to make that very convincing. You No. It did not sound convincing, Alison. <laughs> Looking at each other, I think we both realize we're just making small talk. She leans forward, the two of us sharing a momentary kiss before she nods for me to come in. It's strange how such a simple action can feel so nice every time. My heart's skipping even from the most gentle peck. Oh, oh, this is so nice. I obediently follow her inside, closing the door behind me as I do. I wonder why there's only one stocking there. Dad, she's here. Oh, is this, oh, is this her sister? Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know why. When Eileen was mentioning her sister, I thought it was like a sister who is also an adult. I forgot that children exist. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's so small. She's so small. Eileen's cut off by the sound of socked footsteps on carpet rapidly approaching. A small figure suddenly skips around the corner of the stairs and out into the entranceway, nearly barreling straight into Eileen before stopping herself. She's so... don't... There's a baby. There's a baby. With both of us taken by surprise, the small girl examines me. Likely around ten by the looks of her. It's difficult not to see a bit of Eileen in her face. They, they, they look very similar. Uh, hello there. She quickly shuffles behind Eileen in response, her apprehensive face peering out from safety. Eileen just gives a sigh in response. Oh, she's shy. <laughs> she's a shy baby. Oh. Oh, she's so small. She's so tiny. Oh, see, I, this caught me off guard because, at least in my house, even though we're all adults, we still put, we still have stockings out. <laughs> We have four stockings out. There's, there's one for all of us and then one for Tiffany the cat as well. <sighs> Welcome to the family. No. Oh. Oh. oh, that's so sweet. Oh. Yay. Went to go hydrate. Look, there's a baby. There's a, there's a small child now. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, you're 30 and still do stockings. I'm glad it's not just me. I don't know, it just feels really Christmassy to me. I We always have our stockings. I've had the same stocking for years. It's part of, like, the traditions. Ah. Oh, there's a turkey. Oh, no, chicken. It's chicken. Okay. <laughs> the smell of freshly cooked chicken wafts in the air, the skin still steaming away with an appetizing glint. The line of plates down the center of the table hardly lacks for sides either, with potato salad, coleslaw, lettuce, and other greens. While I'm thankful for the luxurious dinner before me, it's a rather quick introduction to her family. I can't help but feel intimidated when surrounded by everyone at once. Oh, I would be the same. I'd be so nervous too. 
you're hungry now. I think I would also feel hungry now if I hadn't just had dinner. <laughs> I'm really glad I just had dinner. I just finished my dinner because my brother cooked dinner tonight and it was very yummy. But yeah, I finished that right before I started stream, so <laughs> thankfully I'm I'm not hungry right now, but it it's also nice. <gasps> no, they said she's like 10, but that girl is at Eileen's shoulder height. But Eileen Eileen is also really tall. Eileen is super tall. <laughs> also, I would also feel intimidated if we're just going straight into a meal together. That's... Whew. With her father already preparing dinner as Eileen let me in, and her mother arriving from work only soon after, it was unavoidable. That being the case, here we all are, gathered around one big table. While not exactly a mansion, it's obvious Eileen's family lives very comfortably. I'd probably be green with envy at how well off they are, if not for being so self-conscious of how to act in front of them. <laughs> uh, hi? I suppose some proper introductions are in order now that we're all together. What's with the side eye? Hello? Hi? True, but consider baby. Oh yeah, I, w I wasn't saying she's not baby. She she is baby. <laughs> of course she's baby. I'm Eileen's father, Andrew, and this is my lovely wife, Elizabeth. A pleasure. <laughs> and you would be Allison? Why does she say it like that? Uh, yes. Oh, um, yes. Allison Merlot. My nerves seem to amuse her father as he gives a reassuring smile. <laughs> this isn't a job interview. You can relax. I would be so intimidated in this situation. Like, the fact that she's also sat at this end of the table with both of Eileen's parents, too. Like, <laughs> Eileen, why'd you do that to her? <sighs> right, yeah, sorry. I let out a long breath to try and relax a little, though it doesn't really work. Well now, let's dig in. I'm no chef, but it hopefully shouldn't give you food poisoning. <laughs> okay, is she pouting or is she just taking a big mouthful of food? That's the question. Smiling, point, uh, smiling politely at his attempt to lighten the mood, I start to ladle this and that from the large plates. My mouth's already watering at the prospect of so much wonderful smelling food. Rose might be many things, but she isn't a cook. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah, maybe she's pouting because Allison had to introduce herself before they can start taking the food. She's just like, but I want to take it now. I'm hungry. Me hungry. Give food. Satisfied with my selection of meats and salads, I pile some potato salad onto my fork and tentatively have a taste. My reactions seem to draw some smiles as I make progress on the meal, but I'm so enamored with the food, I can't help but keep going. It's nice to see Eileen's already made friends in college. <laughs> a brief panic comes over me as I realize we haven't talked this over. Is she out to her parents? Are we going to play this as simply friends? As I mull over how to handle things, Eileen's voice cuts through. Allison's my girlfriend. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. She probably should have mentioned that earlier. That, um, mm, hmm. Hmm, what a moment to, uh, huh. Everything seems to stop for a moment. What? Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate and the posture check. Yes, I need to stop for a second. Everything seems to stop for a moment as I have a big stretch. That is a sip of my drink. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why? That's not the kind of thing you just drop in the middle of a meal like this. That. Eileen, please. Eileen, why? Oh, um, I don't see how this can go badly. 
Unless she did it on purpose, knowing that her parents wouldn't be able to make a fuss if there was a guest there. Oh, um, let's see how this goes, I guess. And Cal St. Lou, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. What a, what a moment to just, like, drop that. Like, yeah, I'm realizing, too, I don't even know if she's come out to her parents or not. Like, if she's already come out, it's still bad. But it wouldn't be as bad. But, like, it... well, let's see how this goes. Uh... Yes, you should have. <laughs> Ooh. I thought you said having a girlfriend wouldn't be a problem. Okay, so she, she is out, at least. <laughs> hmm. You know that isn't what I'm talking about. This isn't the first time you've kept us in the dark since moving out. Uh oh. Um. Um. I have to admit that I can sympathize with her mother, which puts me in a delightfully awkward spot. Eileen's father makes no attempt to mediate as he eats, which is probably the best approach. <laughs> I didn't think I needed to report back on everything I did. Oh, here we go. Don't you think this is important enough to warrant a phone call? Neither Eileen nor her mother raise their voice, even eating the odd bit of food as they quibble. The argument almost feels routine, which, going by her father's reaction, might well be the case. Even her sister is still eating, albeit with badly hidden glances. <laughs> yeah, I get the impression this is... This is just how they talk, I think. I, I, I get the feeling that any conversation between those two would end up in, like, a, a harsh... Hesitate to say argument, just, like, disagreement? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna sit here and eat my food, I guess. Um, <laughs> tee -hee. But yeah, it, it does explain a lot as about like why Eileen doesn't um, keep in touch as much as she might otherwise. Yeah, like imagine not being happy at the news. Yeah, like that. If it was me in that situation, I would just be like, oh my goodness, congratulations. I, I wouldn't immediately just be like, well, you should have told me that sooner. You should have let me know everything immediately. How dare you? How, like... Huh. Huh. <laughs> just, um, actually, it's a surprise. Hmm. I mean, our daughter's first girlfriend. <laughs> Isn't it nice she gained something from college? Oh my god, whoa! That's so mean, what the heck? She looks pointedly to her husband with just an edge of snark to her voice, but he, perhaps smartly, simply acknowledges her with a smile. Dropping that on them here and now is quite the decision. I'm beginning to wonder why I thought this was a good idea. I can't read her parents at all, but I can already tell my presence here is only increasing attention that usually permeates this household. Well, you know now. <laughs> at least Eileen dating a girl isn't a problem in and of itself. Eileen's father finally pipes up as their argument peters out, taking a swig of his wine to wash down his food. By a swig, do you mean like the whole glass? Because I think I would be downing the glass at this point. <laughs> uh, setting all that aside, it sounds like college in Utah is working out well for the both of them. Yeah! Her father gives a brief chuckle, maybe sensing my tense mood. He seems down to earth and relaxed, especially compared to her mother. <laughs> oh, I, d I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but... Eileen's mother gives me the impression that she would be the type to say, Oh, oh, you're gay? Well, having a girlfriend is fine. That's all right. It's just a phase anyway. Like, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, she'd be the type, like, I know I said that, but I didn't expect you to actually get a girlfriend. That's a different matter. Like, that's the kind of impression I get. <laughs> 
She'd just be like, oh, you're, you're, you're still on with that silly gay nonsense. When will you grow out of it? Like, hmm. That said, I get a vague feeling of being a foreigner, and not just because I'm in a different city. As if there's a certain social etiquette that I'm not quite aware of, but everyone else is following naturally. Quite. So, tell us about yourself, Alison. Oh, now's the job interview. <laughs> oh, okay, um... <laughs> Attention now focused on me, I freeze up. I must have expected this would come up. Judging by their conversation, Eileen probably told them nothing about me. This feels like introductions on the first day of elementary school all over again. Um, let's see. I go to the same college as Eileen. I've lived in the same city my whole life, but I moved a little closer to campus before semester started, so I'm still getting used to that. Allison is such a sweetheart. I'm... <laughs> uh... So you're an uh, art student like Eileen? Just from that line, I can tell what she thinks about Eileen being an art student. Probably wanted her to become a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm nowhere near her level. I'm actually on a science scholarship. Science, huh? Wanted her to become a doctor, eh? <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... She sounds immediately interested, her eyebrows raised, but all I can offer is an evasive dodge. I don't know how to say that I'm not really excited about it, even if I have, even if I apparently have some talent. Yeah, see, she's just won over Eileen's mother by being like, oh yeah, I'm good at science and I'm gonna get a high paying job. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can tell that's just what she's thinking. She's just like, oh, you're, you're actually studying something useful and not those uh, hearts. <laughs> like, oh, her attitude. I. <laughs> No. <laughs> anyway. We are in the art club together, though. We met through the mutual friend who made it. I see. Yeah, and she sounds... She sounds unimpressed again. I'm... Oh, she's so mean. She's so mean. Her previous curiosity suddenly hits a wall, her entire demeanor changing. Did I say something wrong? The abrupt change in tone completely breaks my train of thought. Unsure whether to continue or clear things up? <laughs> a little pouty face over here as well. The other problem I have is the feeling of someone's eyes drilling into me. Eileen's mother notices as my eyes shift beside her, hand holding the little girl's back to reassure her. Reassure her of what? Huh? Come on, dear. Be polite. Says you. You're not being polite, Elizabeth. Like, <laughs> Oh my goodness. The effort doesn't seem to move her. The girl resisting as her suspicious face shrinks behind her daintily patterned children's plate. Don't be silly. Is she hiding behind her plate? Like, literally hiding behind it? It's okay, she's a baby. <laughs> My name's Eve. Hi, Eve. Hi. Nice to meet you, Eve. That's a lovely name. I keep smiling, but her pouting shows my charm offensive isn't working out. Once again, Eileen comes to the rescue, speaking up as I try to think of another way to overcome her distrust. She's so shy. She's so shy. She's just a little baby. Are you going to be like this all night? Eve just huffs and starts shoveling food into her mouth. The size of her spoon and the table before her makes the attempt at seriousness look more amusing than anything else. <laughs> Don't mind her. She'll come around. She's just shy. It's okay. It's okay. I fully understand that. <laughs> she might say that, but I was hoping her cute little sister might be a little warm towards me. At least her mother has given up questioning me for now. 
Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. The spare guest room's just been cleaned out a few days ago, so you can use that while you're here. Why do I feel like Eileen's gonna make a fuss about sharing a bed now? Why do I feel like Eileen is going to push against her mother and be like, well, actually, she's sharing my room? Thank you very much. I'm really sorry to impose so much on you. <laughs> you oh, have charm not. going for you. Wouldn't you say, Eileen? Huh? What does that mean? What does she mean by that? I'm... I... What... What... I can tell she doesn't mean that as just a compliment. Like, what... What does she mean? Eileen grimaces, her mother embarrassing her in that particular way only a parent knows how. Is she saying Eileen has no charm? Like, Eileen has so much charm. What the heck? What the heck? Ah... <sighs> Well, oh, what a, what an uncomfortable meal. Wow. Uh, uh, wow. What? Um, just imagine afterwards, Alison just being, Wow, Eileen, your, your, your father seems nice. Your sister's so sweet. Your mother was there. <laughs> I can already feel my eyelids getting heavy as I lean back into the wonderfully soft couch. The exhaustion of the trip and meeting with Eileen's folks finally catching up to me as I rest in the living room. Oh my goodness, and imagine imagine having that meal experience too after a seven hour journey on a motorbike. Alison, I feel so bad for her. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's be honest. Even if you were a parent, you would separate your children and their spouse from sharing a room because you're just that protective. Even even if they're grown adults? Like, I don't know. I'm... I don't, like, to me, I'm... I, I'd be... I don't want to be like, I'm, I'm the cool parent, whatever, but I'm... Like, if it's going to be, like, in the family home, there's not going to be anything naughty-naughty going on, because that would just feel weird anyway. If they're just literally sleeping next to each other, I wouldn't see anything wrong with that. I wouldn't- I wouldn't see a problem with that. Ah, oh, you're very protective. Oh, I- I can understand it, but also I- I wouldn't- I wouldn't do the same, I don't think. But I also can't see myself as a parent either way, so that's not really a problem. <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever become a parent. Like, I know, I'm a, I'm a cat parent. I have a cat child. That's that's enough for me. Haha. <laughs> I can already. Oh, I already read this. Yes. I le uh, Allison must be so exhausted right now. The fireplace happily crackles away near the Christmas tree. The cozy room all the warmer, thanks to the heat of the shower still lingering on my skin. Oh, I love that they have an open fire too. That's so nice. Now I call Auntie Uncle is the way. Yeah, that's that's my plan. I'm just <laughs> I, I wanna be the cool aunt. I wanna be the aunt that shows up every now and then, has a glass of wine, drops some presents, seems really cool, leaves. <laughs> I'll just show up every now and then, just be like, wow, I'm the cool wine aunt. <laughs> All that can be heard are the fire and the faint clanking of dishes as Eileen's parents wash up, recounting the day's events between them. I very nearly su oh, hi. I very nearly succumb to my doziness before Eileen walks in, pulling back her still slightly wet hair. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> Alison. I mean, yeah. The sight of her in pajamas wakes me up a little, though I quickly try to move my gaze elsewhere. She practically collapses onto the couch beside me, staring up at the ceiling for a while to collect herself. I catch myself staring at her, but if she minds, she doesn't show it. Oh my goodness, Bob! I got a Bob read! Bob, hello! Welcome, welcome! 
Welcome, how's it going? Thank you for the raid. Welcome on in. Welcome, Bob. Welcome, raiders. You were playing Entropy Santa. Oh, how'd it go? How'd it go? Me, he he. I can do the command as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome on in. I hope you had a fun stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I. I had a lot of fun with Entropy Center, like, until I didn't. So I, I hope you had fun with it. It's, it's a really interesting game. But I hope the puzzling went well. You finished eight acts. Nice. Nice. Good progress then. I'm glad you had fun with it. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. You arrived just in time to see Eileen in her pajamas. Uh, <laughs> hi. But to anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK. And I love comfy games and puzzle games. And I'm currently doing a comfy story game, although that dinner was not comfy. That was a very uncomfortable dinner, but uh, <laughs> but I'm currently playing a Yuri visual novel called First Snow. We've got les lesbians, les les women, girls, good times. <laughs> And thank you for bringing the raid this way. Love the game, but it is a story. Um, yeah, it's um, the that's yeah, that's how I'd sum it up too, honestly. <laughs> but I'm glad you've been having fun with it. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. If you have to head off, I know it's late, especially after you've been streaming. If you gotta go get some rest or food or a drink, but if you want to stick around for a bit, we've got women. And uh, Allison is currently at Eileen's childhood home. They just had a really awkward dinner conversation where Eileen just dropped that she forgot to mention that Allison was her girlfriend. And her mother seems... Her dad seems nice. <laughs> her dad seems nice. Her, her, her little sister seems sweet. Her mum... The yes. Anyway, <laughs> women favorite people. Me too. The, when when women, you know when women. <laughs> it's actually a really good vine boom. It's like you know when women. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. When women. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for the raid, though. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. It was it was a very good good vine boom, thank you. I catch myself staring at her, but if she minds, she doesn't show it. Ugh. What a day. <sighs> that goes for both of us. I almost mentioned the argument Eileen had with her mother, but I can't work out how I want to phrase it. Maybe it's for the best that Eileen preempts me. Yeah, that's that's not the kind of thing to to mention. Maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's rare the chances you have to raid me. Yeah, because you're usually you usually raid later, later than I'm I'm streaming. So the fact that I'm doing a late stream today actually worked out nicely. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Yeah, that's pro. It's probably best that she didn't bring that up first. So, how was the trip, now that we can talk properly? The times we stopped were good. <laughs> You're braver than I am. Couldn't pay me enough to get on one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm sure you'd be a natural at it. No way. Your roommate's crazy for using it as her only transportation. Your parents seem nice. <laughs> oh, Alison. <laughs> she really said it. She actually said it. Eileen just shrugs. I wish they were a little more subtle. About what? Being so specific that you'll use the guest room, not mine. Yeah, that was very, very blatantly like, oh, by the way, you have the guest room. The guest room for you. Now that we know you are a girlfriend, you get the guest room. <laughs> My cheeks flush scarlet as I connect the dots. Huh? Did you 
just realised what that was about. <laughs> ah, I was right, she did raise a stink about it, just privately. Yeah, I, I didn't figure Eileen would just let that go, but she probably knows when to choose her battles and that would not be one of them. <laughs> Oh, I love, though, that Alison's just so oblivious. She says that Eileen completely misses all of the subtext and is just like, oh, thank you so much for tidying it for me. That's so generous and sweet of you. Like, <laughs> just completely flew over her head. She's so sweet. Oh, no, but I... I'm still embarrassed to talk about it. Eileen finds amusement in how flustered I am. I bury my face in my hands. Never change. If I had lied and said we were just friends, I wonder if they would have been so adamant about the two of us not sharing a room. I don't think they would. <laughs> Genuinely don't think they would have. I peek at her from behind my hands. I don't really know what to say. I don't know enough about her parents to say anything. I'm... I'm so proud of Alison for re for recognizing that. <laughs> Maybe that would have been better, huh? Oh, her smile returns and she leans in toward me. I can feel my face go redder. My heart burning in my chest. All I can do is lean in to meet her. Eileen? Eileen towards Eileen. Hee hee hee. Ah, uh, gonna head off and try to figure out what to do with your fiancé's PC. Oh no, is the motherboard fried? Oh, I, I hope you can figure something out. Oh, the motherboard's like the worst part to go. But thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Love you too. Take care. I hope you can figure something out. <laughs> thank you for the raid again. And I hope you rest well afterwards too. <laughs> Good luck. I'll give you all of the luck. You get all of our luck. <laughs> Eileen closes her eyes, our lips meeting for one brief moment. As I pull back, the two of us look at each other and smile, partly from happiness and partly from our sheepishness. <laughs> Stealing a kiss. It's going to be a while before this comes naturally, I guess. As I watch her, though, Eileen's face slowly collapses into frustration. What's the matter? Ah, uh, gonna go to sleep super early today because you have a test tomorrow. Oh my goodness, good luck with the test. I hope it goes well. I hope you ace that too. I'll... Okay, I won't send Barb all of the good luck. I'll send you a little bit of the good luck too. You both get the good luck. <laughs> but thank you for stopping in and thank you for the follow as well. I hope you can rest well. I hope you have a, a good night's sleep. Oh, and Zarok, thank you for the self-care kit. I'll have a big stretch with the posture check. And let me have... I'm going to have monster this time, I'm sorry. I, I want the monster. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, thank you. Actually, no. I'll have some tea as well. I made the tea. It'd be a shame not to drink it. Ah, my squeaky tea flask. <laughs> ah. As I watch her, though, Eileen's face slowly collapses into frustration. What's wrong? Everything's wrong! Oh! What's wrong? What's the matter? Why is she so upset? What's... Eileen makes no secret of her displeasure. She sighs and takes to her feet, confronting the small and very unhappy girl before us. It stings to be so close, only to be interrupted. Uh -huh. Eve. Eileen's sister takes little notice, directing her pouting towards the object of her annoyance. Me. Oh my gosh, she's jealous! Oh! <laughs> Oh, bless her, she's jealous. Oh, it all makes sense now. <laughs> okay, but Eve, look at it this way. Two cool big sisters. Yes? 
we can come to an arrangement here, right? You're, you're jealous that I'm taking away your sister's attention. What if you now get attention from both of us? Yes? <laughs> She's my sister! I finally get to play with Eileen after so long, and you keep hugging her! Oh, she's such a little sweetheart. Oh, I just, I just want to give her a hug and play games with her. Want to play, do you? Eileen flits behind Eve while she's busy ranting at me, bringing her arms around the child's midsection and lifting her up against her chest with ease. <laughs> As Eve finds her feet dangling a couple of inches from the carpet, she begins flailing about to grab a foothold. <laughs> Let go of me! Wow, you haven't grown at all. <laughs> That'll definitely help calm her down. To no surprise, the two start fighting, Eve's slight body jerking this way and that as Eileen plants her feet and refuses to let go despite her squirming around. I'll tell mom on you! <laughs> and what, she'll ground me? Eve fruitlessly continues to struggle, arms and legs flailing about in the air. <laughs> For all her frustration and growling, her acting out just makes Eileen all the more amused as she teases her little sister. <laughs> Somehow, th this kind of behaviour from Eileen does not surprise me at all. <laughs> Watching the two having their little sibling scuffle, it reminds me of my brothers at home. For the first time, my nerves about being here fade a little. Sitting on the side of the bed I'll be using for a week, I idly watch the news on the small television placed on a cabinet. The little speakers on the device try valiantly, but the voices are so tinny I can barely understand them. It's not even a TV, I don't think, that's just a monitor. <laughs> ah. It's 10.30 in the evening, going by the clock in the corner of the broadcast. Adulthood's weird now that I can go to sleep whenever I want without my parents disapproving. I dutifully do so at a reasonable time anyway, so I can be fresh for school. Hey, I should save for reasons. Okay, yes, I'm gonna save for absolutely no reason. There we go. There we go, I'm saving for no reason, thank you. <laughs> I dutifully do so at a reasonable time anyway, so I can be fresh for school. The fact I'm actually watching the news nowadays, too, is strange. See, that is something I would never do. <laughs> I get my news from the internet. I don't want to actually watch the news. It's depressing. Bored of the reports about trucks being stuck after sliding around on the roads, I let myself flop back onto the soft blankets as it drones on. Lacking the energy to do much else, I lazily stare upwards. Yet another unfamiliar ceiling above me. It feels like everything is constantly changing these days. My old home sure didn't have a guest bedroom, let alone one that's so nicely furnished. Here I was thinking I'd be squeezing into Eileen's bed. Not that I've, I'd have minded that at all. For all the lovely things she has here though, Eileen seems to be intentionally trying to distance herself from her parents. I don't understand it at all. How? Alison, Alison, did you miss that whole dinner argument? How can... Huh. She might have told me not to pry into her life, but it's hard to ignore what's right in front of my face. Oh. I quickly shuffle myself up at the sound of the opening door sliding across the carpet. Oh, hi. With a gentle touch, Eileen gingerly closes the door behind her. I'd thought everyone to be asleep by now, but maybe I should have expected her of all people to still be up. Eileen. She puts a finger over her lips as she turns back, before walking up, climbing onto the bed, and facing me as I twist around. The two of us end up sitting in its centre. Shouldn't you be... sleeping? Hmm. Same goes for you. 
she has me there. Far from the quiet feeling awkward, I find myself smiling at our secret rendezvous. <laughs> it feels like we're kids having a sleepover. Too bad the movie's just news instead of some horror movie we snuck past our parents. You did that? <laughs> Once. My friends were so freaked out we went back to the usual horrible romance stuff. <sighs> There's nothing wrong with romance movies. Her face makes it abundantly clear that this is a difference of opinion that'll never be bridged. <laughs> I have to admit, there is one thing different to back then, too. Eileen's body is really hard to ignore when we're like this. As much as I try to distract myself from the subject, she did sneak into my bedroom at night. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> what's wrong? Nothing. It's just... You're really pretty. <laughs> Look at that expression. Look at that face. It isn't often I catch her being bashful, but I think this might finally be one of those times. <laughs> My moment of victory is brief, though, with Eileen's quick movement towards me taking me all the more off guard. Unable to make sense of the girl suddenly lunging at me, the both of us are sent falling backwards into the soft mattress. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness me. Oh. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Oh, my. <laughs> ah. It takes a couple of seconds to collect myself and work out what's happened. Time seeming to stop as I'm left staring upwards at the pair of emerald eyes above me. I'm pinned, I think. A brief attempt to right myself ends in little more than a couple of weak jerks, Eileen holding my arms to the thick sheets with think. her body weight. <gasps> it's true, I cannot think. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh... Silence reigns, my vision filled with her face looking downwards. I have no idea what to say as my heart beats wildly in my chest. Yet, she doesn't say a word. Eileen, what are you? I missed you. <laughs> How am I supposed to respond to that? Were her face any different? I'd think it an invitation, but there's a sincerity there that takes me off guard. Oh my. I wonder how often I've seen her face, or anyone's, from this close, and for so long. I can't help but stare upwards, trying my best to read that face I so often can't. As I do, though, I realize something. She's doing just the same. <gasps> Your response would be to spontaneously liquefy, honestly, same. My response would be to cease to exist, I think. <laughs> Maybe she's scared of forcing me to do something I don't want to do, or afraid of getting too close too fast. Maybe she's simply like I am, unused to being looked at this intently. Either way, she isn't leering over me. Eileen's genuinely unsure of what to do next. Whatever the reason, I can't help but smile a little. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> oh, she looks so worried. <laughs> oh, seeing her flustered like this is such a different side to her. Oh my goodness. I was just thinking how you're still the same as ever. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. They're both so cute. I'm just... Uh... What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I answer her confusion by lifting my chin a little in invitation. Not that I can move much more. It's like I, I move as much as I can, which is literally lifting my head a little bit. <laughs> of all the times for your mom to come in. Don't worry, it's fine. They they just fell over. They're getting back up again. Don't worry about it. There's nothing untoward going on here. <laughs> Uh, 
Without any further prompting needed, she presses her lips to mine with a satisfied sigh. Yes! It isn't... Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> it isn't long before our tongues move about, her breath tingling on my face. I squirm about roughly as the atmosphere gets heavier between us, Eileen easily keeping me down. It's a little exciting to be playing like this, and she shows no signs of letting up. A shiver runs up my spine as I find her thigh between my legs, in my fidgeting about, my heart beginning to race with ideas of this and that. With lips affectionately breaking and meeting, Eileen barely letting me take so much of a breath. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think the snake laugh is quite possibly the one sound that is like the most inappropriate wow. in this situation. No, actually, no, the, the Owen Wilson wow is there. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can't help but think back to the first time we did this. Oh, the, the painting. God, that timing was impeccable. That was, oh, that was, that was amazing. Wow. <laughs> oh my, oh, I'm, oh, help, I'm crying. <laughs> this isn't how I expected this to go. It's not how they expected it to go either, probably. Then, several sharp thuds against the door ring out. <laughs> my entire body freezes, my heart nearly jumping out of my chest. The both of us freeze up as I break from our kissing to look over, hoping against hope that the door doesn't creak open. It's getting late, Alison. Why now, of all times? I can only thank my lucky stars that we've been quiet, but being one door handle turn away from being seen like this is far too close for comfort. Ah, uh, right. Uh, sorry, I'll... Go to bed soon. That was remarkably more natural than I thought I'd be able to pull off. Thank you. If you need anything, just ask. Sleep well. Thanks. Good night. As her footsteps go down the hallway, the both of us heave a great sigh. The mood's completely gone as the both of us look to each other. I suppose this is one benefit of Eileen having her own apartment. As I said before. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I still can't believe that timing. That timing was, that was so good. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. I run my hands through my hair to settle myself down as Eileen sits back on the bed, wisely letting a few minutes go by before trying to slip out of my room. Oh, please don't let her get caught. I also missed living alone. <sighs> well, that was annoying. See you tomorrow, I guess. Have a good sleep. With that, she slips off the bed, quietly <coughs> shuffling across the room. <laughs> no, don't spot her. Don't spot her. Get the cardboard box out. Quick, quietly shuffling across the room before pausing a moment before turning the handle. As I pick myself up to wish her a good night, she curtly turns back. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I do this to myself, really. All of these sound alerts I have, I do this to myself. I, I don't know what I expected. <laughs> always check behind behind the shower curtain to be honest I think you look really pretty too <laughs> I 
I don't manage to form a reply before she skitters out of the room. Then again, my scarlet cheeks probably did the job for me. Smash cut to the outside of the room and her mom's just standing there. Oh god, that would be... that That's the true horror film. Like, you don't, you don't need a knife to be scary in this situation. She would just have to stand there. Okay, I don't think she got caught. <laughs> ha! Huh. Well, that was... that was eventful. <laughs> Rubbing sleep from my eyes as I slowly drag myself to the living room, a restrained yawn heralds my entrance. I thought I might have trouble getting to sleep in an unfamiliar place, but after everything that happened, I crashed almost immediately. Looks like Eileen's family are early risers, noises from the kitchen presumably being from her parents, while the television blares away just ahead. The fire's crackling would make it quite a cosy scene, if not for being interspersed with cartoon voices. Eve sits on the couch as I glance down, already bundled up in her winter outfit like a puffy ball of clothing. Eagerly watching the morning cartoons, her legs swing away as she happily munches on a bowl of brightly coloured cereal. I can't help but smile, being reminded of my own childhood. The show and the setting might be different, but the innocence is just the same. I forgot what this simple experience felt like. No. Yeah, I Alison is innocent no more. <laughs> just uh, her mum conveniently standing in the shadow of the hallway. Just, I saw everything. <laughs> that would be terrifying. It would be so terrifying if she saw and didn't say anything and brought it up afterwards. That would be the scariest part. I take a seat beside the oversized hamster, Eve barely acknowledging my presence before Eileen pops in from the kitchen and calls out to me. Looks like the coffee in her hand hasn't kicked in quite yet. Allison. Want any food? There's toast and cereal if you want any. Hmm. <sighs> I don't usually eat breakfast. Thanks, though. Oh, but it's the most important meal of the day. I, I can't say anything. I I don't usually eat breakfast, either. <laughs> I'm a bad person. Shrugging in response, the tired Eileen heads back out. Despite settling down to watch Eve's cartoons with her, I can't help but eavesdrop at the, as the conversation between Eileen and her mother can be heard from the other room. Oh, no. Um, By conversation... Do you mean argument? Any plans for the day? Not argument yet. I have a feeling it will become one. I was going to study for school. Real studying, not just oh, drawing. There it is. Oh my! Every time she does the digs, like, oh well, you you're a real student, not an art student. I'm. Oh. Ooh, it makes me mad. Ah, oh, it makes me mad. There she goes. Yeah. I... The cartoon's loud exclamations punctuate the short silence that forms Eileen's reply. <laughs> We're having a great time, huh? Should have known. <laughs> I've seen your marks from high school. I just want you to do well. Oh my god. I just... Maybe you can have Allison help. She seems to have a good head on her shoulders. Uh, that... That doesn't feel good to hear. I, I know it's technically a compliment. That doesn't feel good to hear. I'm... Oh. She's been helping me with my math already. Uh. And here I was, worrying about who you might end up with for a girlfriend. You know I can handle myself fine. Why worry? Because I'm your mother. That's why. Eileen doesn't exactly sound buoyed by the comments, but I have to admit that the praise is nice to hear. It is a bit sad to hear her mother doesn't approve of her pursuing art, though. I wonder how tempered this exchange is, thanks to them keeping things together since I'm around. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good point, too. Like, the arguments are like this with a guest in the house. Imagine how bad it usually is. <laughs> huh. 
Huh. Oh, morning, you two. Hi, hi, Andrew. Nice to see you. Please, please go break the tension a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> Going out, dear? Just swinging into town to grab paper and milk. Want to come along? Eve, Allison, we're heading out for a moment. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we're going by your favorite shop, Eve. Is he doing what I think he's doing? I think Andrew's a really great dad. I get, I get the impression that Andrew was a really great dad. <laughs> I think I know what he's doing here, and if if it is, if it is intentional, Andrew's great. <laughs> I'm coming! I'm coming! She drops her almost finished bowl onto the coffee table so hastily that it nearly spills skittering out to the door with a faint pitter-patter on the carpet. It's amazing how much energy kids have. Eileen's parents give a short farewell as they escort Eve out, the girl racing out straight to the car. To be a child again, filled with excitement for the next car trip or television show. Ah, yeah, he, he definitely did that on purpose. I, I also love the comments of, I like Andrew, he seems nice. Hey, I'm going out with the whole family. I really like Andrew. He seems really nice. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it. He's he seems like a great guy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> That's so nice of him. Ah, to be a child. With her family out the door, Eileen watches them drive off before heading over. I shift over a little as she drops onto the couch, setting her coffee down with somewhat more care than her sister's cereal. Ah, oh, you for a second thought I had reverb on, but it was your phone having the stream on very quietly. I mean, I could put re reverb on if you wanted. I don't know if it would work for a story like this, but... I <laughs> no, actually, I don't know where I put my reverb button. I don't actually know what I did with it. Is it this? Is it? Oh no, no, that's my my loudspeaker. Attention, everybody! Eileen's family has left the house. I repeat, Eileen's family has left the house. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. I, I've lost my reverb. <laughs> That'll do. That's fine. I give a loud stretch, but rather than being out of tiredness, it's more to calm myself as my heart starts beating in anticipation. We're finally alone, for real this time. As I look over to Eileen, it's obvious that she has the same idea as she turns off the television. Wanna pick up where we left off last night? Um, 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 um. I want to, but isn't it kind of early for this? <laughs> she has to think that one through. Alison, what? Uh, huh? Okay. <laughs> Attention, everyone. I have an important announcement. Women. That is all. Thank you. <laughs> Is there like I'm I'm just, I'm trying to think this through myself as well. I'm like, is it time? Is there a specific time? Is Allison thinking that like because you you sleep in a bed at night that it has to be a nightly activity? Is that what she's thinking? I'm um hmm. She has to think that one through. It'll wake us up. I'm not given a chance to respond as she presses her lips to mine. Not that I particularly wanted to argue the fact. This will likely be the last time we can share a moment like this for a good while. <laughs> too early for hand-holding. That is far too much. Okay, thank goodness. We got a fade to black scene. Thank goodness. It, because it is too early for that. I say as it's like 10 p.m. for me. <laughs> far too early for that. Oh, goodness. 
Here we go. Oh, we're building a snowman? Yes! The snow makes a satisfying sound as I pat it down, each handful making the sphere before me that little bit larger. It's surprising how much physical work putting a snowman together is, but this is my first time making one this size. Standing out on the front lawn in the cold of early morning, I keep patiently patting away at my creation, slowly but surely building him up. I've been wanting to make a snowman for a while now, but between moving, studying, and hanging out with others, there just hasn't been much time. While I might have wanted to keep lazing around with Eileen, her family probably won't take much longer to get back, and she wanted to keep practicing her art. If nothing else, at least we're both a lot more awake now. I, after, um, not doing anything. Much more awake after definitely not doing anything. <laughs> Artem, hello, welcome, welcome. Good evening. You're here just in time. Allison's making a, a snow, a snowman. Snow woman? Snow person, snow creature. I want to make a snow creature next time there's snow. It's rather nice to be out here, despite the cold, and given some much needed, oh, and given some much needed time to unwind. I think I'm living up to the expectations of Eileen's family, but living in another's home under the gaze of strangers is still stressful. Uh, yeah, it's very stressful. Yeah, making a snow lesbian. Snowwoman. Not that I'm alone out here, the... Oh, not that I'm alone out here. The odd squirrel flits about in the distance between the trees, and birds can be heard chirping away from the pines. I wonder if Eileen, for her love of the outdoors, appreciates the sounds of nature around here. Even if you're the only person around, you're never really alone. The air is nice here, too. Fresh, with just a hint of pine wafting from the trees. Oh, I love the smell of pine. The smell of pine... And like fresh air is so nice. It's only when a car door clangs shut behind me that I realize I've become so distracted with my surroundings. Her father makes idle mention of how little traffic they encountered as they pass into the house, with her mother guessing that that the cars must be going in the direction of the city instead. Guessing that that I found a typo. I should mention that afterwards. <laughs> Eve bounces out of the car after them, before stopping to spy at what I'm up to. Ugh. Ah! A snowman! Yup. Never had the time to make one back home. Want to build one too? Yeah! Needing no further prompting, she enthusiastically rushes past me and crouches down, pushing together snow with her tiny gloved hands. We, I think we're winning her over. I think we're winning. I think we're doing it. <laughs> Watch cartoons with her and build a snowman. We got this. We got this. The two of us start working away, with her snowman slowly starting to take form next to mine. Look, she's so cute. She's so sweet. What a little sweetheart. I love this. Oh, you have sad news. Oh, no. Gacha was not kind to you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear it. <laughs> I don't play Genshin, so I, I don't know the characters. But I, I hope you get the next... The next one you want. <laughs> Even if you don't get this one. Uh, unpopular opinion. Do you want to build a snowman? Better than let it go. Honestly, I... I didn't watch Frozen for the longest time. And I only watched it once. And I don't actually remember how most of the songs go. I'm, I'm, that's my confession. My confession is I didn't remember the songs in Frozen. That's, that's my confession. <laughs> Usually I hear songs and I like absorb them into my brain and I can never forget them, but I, I don't remember how, how the Frozen songs go. I just, I'm a terrible person. It's okay. Okay, bye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. You can have the songs. You can have them. You can have them both. All of them. <laughs> it's funny, though, because, like, I think back and I'm like, I didn't dislike Frozen. I, I enjoyed watching that film. 
I just don't remember how the songs go. <laughs> and I guess, like, I, I didn't listen to them outside of the film as well. Like, a lot of people, like, they watch the film and then they listen to the songs more as well. I think that's, like, a very common thing with Disney, Disney films, to listen to the songs a lot outside of the film context. But I never did that. <laughs> There's almost a therapeutic feel to it all, relaxing outside as I see the large snowman coming together with each little step. Even Eve seems to have quieted down, focused wholly on her work. Maybe this is a bit what sculpture is like. It is. She, she's sculpting a snowman. It's true. <laughs> a good snowman is hard to build. It's very true. Also a good game. It's satisfying to build something with my own hands and see an object form where there was nothing before. Looking over to Eve's snowman as I go, I'm impressed with how quickly she's managing to get something together. The slightly lopsided figure roughly equal to her height. <gasps> Whoa, she's building fast. Wow, you must have lots of practice. Oh, they're so sweet, this is so sweet. This is so wholesome, I love this. She continues working away at it, making a bit of a show of pounding the snow into shape with both hands, her entire upper body being put into it. Eileen taught me how to make snowmen. She did, did she? There's a bit of hesitation still, as if reminding herself that she shouldn't talk too much to the stranger st suddenly hanging around her sister. Hopefully the fun of sharing the experience might help distract her. It sounds like you and Eileen are really close. Oh, did, is it bonding time? I think it is. I don't get to play with her much now that she's moved out. Oh. I miss her when she goes away, but Mom and Eileen always argue when she's home. Mm, it doesn't sound like a lot of fun for a child. It doesn't seem like it would be a fun environment. Huh. You could visit her back in Utah, maybe. I'm sure she'd like the company. I don't feel like her mother would allow that. I feel like the problem with that would be that her mother would not allow it. But Eileen would not invite her mother over. <laughs> huh. Dad says we will, but he's always got work. Oh. Hmm. I want to see your paintings. She was always making them before she went away. Suddenly realizing what Eileen's paintings look like. Um, uh, hmm, yes. Her paintings are really pretty, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Mom said it's not a real job, so Eileen gets mad. <sighs> yep. Yep. What about Dad? <laughs> Dad doesn't care. <laughs> Dad oh. said he thinks the same, but that they shouldn't fight oh. so much over it. Oh, he's not supportive either. That feels so bad. Oh. Well, at least he's not, like, outwardly saying it. At least he's not, like, openly saying it. But that still feels bad. Oh. Sounds like they don't get along very well. Hey, um, can you make Eileen happier? I love her. I love her so much. Oh. Oh, she's so sweet. She's such a little sweetheart. What a sweetheart. I'm just, oh. Oh, but she's trying. We're trying. Oh. I'll certainly do my best. Satisfied with the best answer I could drum up, she goes back to work on her snowman, little hands collecting some more snow to pat on. So cute. That is so sweet. That's, uh. That's so wholesome. That's so lovely. <laughs> I might say that, but I don't really know where to begin now that I think about it. She's done a lot for me, but when I think back to when we've been together, all I've been able to do around her is watch as she draws and paints. I'm just getting myself worried over her. As she said, Eileen's perfectly capable of looking after herself. It's not like she needs me to be happy. Okay, Alison, but you are you are being way too hard on yourself here. I 
Give yourself some credit. How many times has Eileen smiled since meeting you? Like, that that's powerful. That's powerful stuff. Trying to stop myself from dwelling, I focus on patting the head of my snowman some more to make it a bit less rectangular. Do you paint too? Oh, not really. I just draw cute things. Like cats. I draw too. Can I show you my drawings later? Yes. Oh my goodness. I want to see her drawings. Yes. Sure. That'd be great. I want to see them. Yes. As she beams a grin, I'm glad to finally be making headway with her. I never thought I'd be bonding through messing about in the snow. Exactly that, yes! She may not need Allison, but she very clearly wants Allison. Like, the fact that Allison's just like, well, I'm not doing anything, sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes just being there is enough. Like, sometimes you don't have to, like, actively do something to still be doing something. Like, being there as company in a room with someone is still doing something. Even if it doesn't feel like it. Like, that she's still doing something there. Like, I'm the kind of person where I... I really like just spending time with someone. Like, we'll be doing our own thing, but, like, in the same room, still, like, keeping each other company. Like, it might seem like we're not doing anything with each other, but just the proximity is doing something. It's nice. It's... Ah... <sighs> Have you shown mom and dad? Mm. Oh, they're always busy, so I can't always show them. My nanny's seen all of them, though. She's nice. She has a nanny. Oh. Mm. It's, uh, this is making me sad. I, just the absent parents who aren't supportive. It's just, uh, a nanny, huh? I suppose you don't get to live this nicely without some sacrifices. I wonder if Eileen was raised by a nanny, too. I wonder if either of them ever really connected with their parents. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh. As we work away on our creations, the door opens once more. Looking around to see who it is, a familiar figure strides up. I do worry about her long boots in the slippery snow, but she doesn't seem bothered. Huh? What are you two doing? Making snowmen! Making snowmen! Making snowmen. You don't say. Well, if you want some lunch instead of freezing out here making snowmen all day, come in from the cold already. Oh, but I want to make him better. Eileen studies her work for a moment before reaching over towards me. Too confused to respond, I just stand there as Eileen's hands reach over and take my scarf in their grip. <gasps> Unwinding it from my neck, she silently walks over to Eve's snowman and smartly wraps it around what's probably supposed to be the neck. <laughs> that looks cool. There. He'll be happier now he's less cold. He'll still be here when you get back, so go and eat something. <laughs> Your show is starting, you know. Shocked that she might be missing even a minute, she completely drops any attention she had on the snowman and stomps off as quickly as her restricting clothing allows. It's obvious Eileen has Eve wrapped around her little finger. It's so, they're so sweet. I, I love this. All I'm left to do is stare at Eileen, pouting. You can grab your scarf back when Eve gets bored of making him. I was going to use it for my own snowman. Seriously? I swear, you're worse than her sometimes. <laughs> we built a snowman! Mostly. Okay. The sound of Saturday morning kids' shows fills the living room as I walk back in, each hand carefully balancing a bowl of cereal. Eve sits quietly, focused on what- oh, wholly focused on watching television. 
While still something of a work in progress, she seems more content to let me hang around now, even if she doesn't engage much. Maybe simply being friendly company is enough for her. That's what it, yes, yes, that's what I, that's exactly what I was just talking about. Yes. <laughs> Despite being the weekend, Eve's parents are out once again. This time they're with Eileen to check how her car is going. Of all the ways Eileen's home is different to my own, it's the sheer quiet that most gets me. With few cars around, nor people nearby, there's only the odd boisterous bird outside to make noise. I could get used to small town life like this. My spacing out is interrupted as the main door shuts with a large thud. Oh, it shuts with a loud thud, a familiar figure striding past. Wait, uh, the videos marked YouTube Kids? What video? Oh, the, 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 the Frozen parody. Wait, like, do you want to hide a body? Wait, that's marked YouTube Kids? That, that sounds wrong. That sounds like it's miscategorized. Hold on. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey. Welcome back. How's the car? Hmm. It's fine. We're heading out once Dad's finished poking at it, by the way. Um... Uh, sure. Where are we going? You'll see. Finish your breakfast for now. I'll get your clothes out and pack everything. Isn't this a bit of a rush? I still have sleep in my eyes from waking up, and she's usually a zombie at this time of morning. Still st still standing around with bowls in my hands, I hold them out and look down, checking that I'm not going crazy and did actually dress myself this morning. But I'm already dressed. Not for where we're going. Where are you going? Are they going skiing? The quiet morning is only punctuated by the crunch of snow underfoot. The occasional birds chirping, and the jangle of items from our backpacks. Wait, they're going hiking? In the snow? Are they going on a snow hike? Oh, Alison's gonna perish. She's not gonna survive this. <laughs> Alison struggled walking around the zoo. She <laughs> if they're going on a hike, she's doomed. Apart from the woman plodding ahead before me and the footprints she leaves behind, all that I can see are pine trees. As much snow on their branches as much snow on their branches as greenery. Oh, and the puffs of condensation from our breaths. The scenery is nice at least. I'd hardly expected to be spending today hiking through the forest when she dragged me out of the house, but so far it's been a pleasant way to spend the day. Tired as my legs may be, Eileen's pace doesn't falter. The hiking clothes she lent me hang off my frame, but I suppose that should have been expected given our height difference. They're comfortable though, and most of all warm. Picked a good day for all this. Not exactly warm, but at least it's not bitterly cold. She says this with all the care that one might give when looking out the window of a morning. Eileen really seems to be treating this as almost an everyday activity. I mean, it probably kind of is for her. The fact we need bear spray out here also weighs on my mind. Apparently being black bear country. Eileen simply carries it in stride. I would be terrified. I would be a terrified baby if I knew we were going into a forest where there could be bears. <laughs> I would be the biggest baby wimp in the world. And so we keep plodding ahead. On the plus side, the air is nice and fresh up here. The odd huge bird squawking as it flies above us, its calls echoing around the mountains, makes for a nice atmosphere. When we're alone like this, her family feels like the elephant in the room. There's so much I want to talk to her about, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say since she told me not to pry. Wanting to fill the air with something, I end up settling for the mildest of small talk. Oh goodness, what's this gonna be? The weather? No, okay. 
So, you're experienced at this, huh? Sure. Yeah, I've been for a few hikes around here. Played outside a lot as a kid. Ended up adventuring more and more until I started hiking. With your father, or...? No. No, alone. It's nice to have some time to myself. Without a doubt, Eileen has to be the most solitary person I've ever met. Maybe this explains her abrasiveness towards her parents, but it feels little unfair for her to take it out on them. No, it, it, Allison, have you been completely missing how belittling the... Oh. Huh. Coming out here has been a real help with my art, too. But we're... I'm running out of breath. I have to stop and take a moment to collect myself. My natural pace is slower than Eileen's, making this hike all the more taxing. <sighs> How is all this related to art? The more life experiences you have, the more inspiration you have. Hard to create anything of worth while stuck in the four walls of my room. You need input to be able to create output. That's how culture works. So true. That's very true, actually. Although, I don't know. Some, some people just come up with things. <laughs> but yeah, inspiration definitely helps with creativity. Also, Space Dinosaurus, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in. We're, we're hiking. <laughs> we're hiking in the snow and Allison is struggling. Allison must have the nicest parents to not notice how broken their relationship is. Yeah, it's it's really obvious that Allison has always had like a lovely, lovely home life. But like her I understand her innocence and how naive she is, but it's still like it, it does get a little frustrating sometimes. I'm just like I'm just like, Allison, you literally heard how belittling Eileen's mother was towards her. How can you then blame Eileen for being cold? Like, it's, it's 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 a hard situation to be in. It's it's very it's a shame, but it makes me so happy that Eileen is like getting like. I hesitate to say a family just yet, but she's definitely making something towards that with her friends and the people she's hanging out with and her little sister, obviously. But it's... Oh, it's... A part of me just hopes that they'll, like, come around in the future. Like, it's... I don't think their relationship is, like, irreparably bad. Like, it's, it's very clear that there is at least some care there. Like, they don't hate her or anything. Like, there's, there's some families where it's so obviously awful from the beginning that there's no chance of anything. But their relationship doesn't feel, like, irreparable. But it is incredibly strained. And honestly, I get the feeling that Eileen's mother won't ever come around unless Eileen gets a really high-paying job, <laughs> as bad as that sounds. Or like, I don't know, because Eileen says she wants to be a teacher, so if Eileen became a teacher, I think that would be the kind of job that her mother would then be like, okay, acceptable, you've, you've proven you can make a living, and then they might be able to, like, build a relationship. But at this point in time, I don't think... I don't think it'd be worth the effort to put that much effort into it with the way things seem right now. I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. That's that's my, my humble onion on this matter. <laughs> Thinking on her words as I turn and start moving once more, Eileen's voice calls out. Allison. Watch out. There's a stone there. Oh, am I going to fall into... Oh. Okay, no, we're fine. <laughs> I look at my feet, quickly stepping around the dangerous trip hazard. If it weren't so big, I'd move it out of the way for future people coming up here. I took this route a lot as a kid. It's probably the easiest way to make it through this area, but you still have to keep an eye out. My breathing heavy, 
I come to the grim realization that Eileen must have been far more fit than she was young than I am now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm a total city kid, I guess. Huh. You're plenty smart, but you can't just pick up everything from books and internet, you know. I could try! <laughs> I don't really know how to receive that half compliment, half criticism. <laughs> Is this where Eileen picked up her independence, hiding in the woods alone? Oh, hiking in the woods alone? It's not like it's bad out here. The air and the sounds and everything are nice. I just can't imagine doing this alone. Yeah, it'd be hard to re fully repair, especially because <laughs> no one in the family has any conflict resolution skills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's... There's a, there's a lot of clashing going on. And it definitely feels like the kind of situation where it's easier to just... Um, keep eating, keep my head down, keep eating. Just... Yeah, it's... It's awkward. It's really awkward. And not just because I'm barely being pulled along as it is. Do you think maybe we can rest soon? Going by the frown on her face, Eileen is clearly disappointed with my request. We've barely started. There's a resting place I want to reach, but we can't stop every few minutes if we want to get back by sundown. Sundown? We're going to be doing this all day? Eileen, Allison is not going to survive. Oh my goodness, I... Just how far does she plan to take us? See, I'm in the Allison camp here. I'm I'm really unfit. I would I would be struggling after half an hour. Ha! <laughs> ah, the sound of the river getting louder and louder as we walk before the two of us finally reach a clearing after a couple of hours or so of hiking. I think that should be Getz. Yeah. But uh, we've, we reached a clearing. Despite barely being able to walk, I've kept myself from complaining anymore, not wanting Eileen to be disappointed in me again. With the two of us slowing to a stop as she looks around, it seems like we'll finally... we'll be finally making a pit stop here. Same as it always was, looks like nobody's messed with it. I'm about to ask what's so significant about this place before she bends down and sweeps some snow off a few large rocks, showing them to be purposefully set in a small circle. <gasps> oh, this is really sweet. Here, have a seat. Setting herself down on a particularly large rock, I quickly follow her lead and sit next to her. Looks like most of the rocks here were carefully set in the ground to make a little campsite, positioned next to the gently flowing river. My legs are happy as I get... Oh, my legs are happy I get to sit down. <laughs> Looks like you've come here before. Hmm. I ended up building this place up into a little base camp over the years. Bears kept taking out anything I brought in or set up, but at least they leave the rocks and ditches alone. Eileen makes herself comfortable as she pulls out a tin and thermos to pour herself some water, while I cup my hands and huff into them to warm up a little. <sighs> Gotta stay warm in the in the snow. Also, Canny Candy, hello, thank you for the head pad. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. With the two of us settling down to recover for a while, I listen to the sounds around us. It's so different to my own home, with the sound of the sounds of cars and crowds replaced by the river's slow trickling, and various birds and other wildlife. Somehow, it isn't a surprise this is the kind of place Eileen would like. As she sits out here thinking to herself, she looks like part of the scenery, just as she did in her quiet art room. At least until Caprice and I made it decidedly less quiet. <laughs> then there's me in my oversized clothes and laboured breaths. <sighs> it's peaceful. Yeah. I thought my apartment was quiet, but 
It's nothing like this. Huh? Your place wasn't quiet at all when I was there. Constant cars, construction, and people walking by. <sighs> I'm not like you. I've only ever lived in the big city. I was worried about being so far from home, but I think I like it here. Playing with Eve has been fun, too. Your family has been really nice to me as well. <laughs> Eileen's face sours, making me immediately regret adding that last little addendum. Or more to the point, that lecturing tone. I want to understand her, but she only gives me small pieces to work with. Not enough to puzzle things together. I knew my sudden intrusion into her home would be at least a little awkward, but I've begun to realize Eileen's resistance to bringing me here was about more than that. Eileen. Just... I've started speaking before even gathering my thoughts. This isn't a great start. Please, please think about what you're saying, Alison, please. <laughs> Just, what is it that makes you want to be away from them so much? To move to a different state? I mean, is it just about your choice in career, or...? <sighs> Can we not bring all that up? I came here exactly to get away from my parents being on my case. And then there was silence. Oh, Alison, Alison. I know she means well, but that just makes it worse. Ah. Oh, Alison. And that explains her rush in the morning to organize our hiking trip out here. Especially if she was stuck with her parents while they gave her car a spin around town. So, what am I even here for? something up. You're here for Eileen. That's what you're here for. You're, you're here for Eileen. <laughs> Alison. And yourself. You're, you're here because you, you kind of wanted to. <laughs> something up? I thought you brought me out here because you wanted to share it with me. I was really excited to see the kinds of things you did growing up. That's exactly what she's doing, Alison. Alison, that's what she's doing. <laughs> Her face tells me she hadn't even considered that reasoning. I feel a little stupid for attaching so much feeling to this now. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a good luck if I left you back at the house while I wasted time out here. So this was just stress relief for her. Even now, she's not looking at me, probably more busy thinking things over with regards to her family. I open my mouth to try and ask her about it, but I can't work out what to say. I'm, a, I'm in pain. They, they're both misunderstanding each other in the worst ways here, like I just... <sighs> I'm just here because she feels obligated to invite me. I guess I should have realized she doesn't want me here. She didn't want me here at her home at all. <laughs> Alison, it's... She she may not want you, like, at her home around her family because she doesn't like her family. She would much rather be spending that with you alone, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's... Alison is misunderstanding. She's, she's starting to catastrophize now in, in the worst possible way. Oh, no, she's, she's going to fall into a hole of you don't want me here, you don't like me. I'm calling it now. I'm. It's what I would have been like when I was younger. So I'm. <laughs> so that's why it hurts so much. Huh. I'm the invader. I'm in her space. It's no wonder she treated me like a bird in this entire walk. If I was going to get in her way, she should have just said so. In the end, the only reason I even know anything about her disagreement with her parents is because Eve told me. Eileen doesn't want me to know. For now, I'll just have to be content as a spectator, looking into her life without getting too involved. <laughs> huh? Alison, that's... 
I don't think Alison fully recognizes the fact that this isn't Eileen's life. Like this, this isn't Eileen's life anymore. Like the fact that she moved away, that that is her life. This used to be her life. This is like an obligation commitment. Eileen is not here out of pure choice. Like, I'm pretty sure Eileen would choose to do other things. Eileen is mostly here for her sister. She said that herself. But Alison is now just going to be like, well, she doesn't want me here, so it's all my fault and I'm the bad one. I'm... Oh. My kokoro. It's okay. It's okay. They'll work it out. I have faith. I have faith in these two. They they care about each other so much. There's no way they, they like, won't figure this out. But, oh, I really relate to this pain. I'm like, this is too real. It's too real. <laughs> um. I quickly look to her, but rather than acting contrite, she's pointing to my left side with her gaze focused. An insect seems to be lazily crawling around on the top of my left hand, the thing about a fingernail in length and jet black. I don't recognize it, but it looks harmless enough. To be honest, I couldn't care less about the little beetle right now. You're not worried? Should I be? Well, I mean, most people don't like bugs crawling on them much. I just shrug, leaning down to press the side of my hand to the cold ground, while gently persuading the bug to get off with my other hand. Piora, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in! That's an adorable model. Thank you so much. Thank you, I'm glad you think so. It was done by my lovely model artist, Addy Rosa. Wait, where's my... Where's my Addy button? There we go. <laughs> welcome on in! Welcome to Visual Novel Time. This is such a contrast to Please Be Happy in terms of how mature people were in that game about the relationships. Yeah, it's... Well, I think it's a, it's definitely a different situation here because Please Be Happy was like, they're, they're grown adults. Juliet is a very grown adult. And in this, it's like they're still like college age. It's They are technically adults. But they they still got a lot of growing up to do. <laughs> and it's always like the most awkward part when you're like right in that midpoint between I'm young enough that I don't have enough life experiences to consider myself an adult, but I'm old enough to be considered an adult. It's that 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 whole period of life is so confusing to get through. It's so much. <laughs> But, oh, but I'm so glad you think so. Oh, I actually rigged it myself. Addy did the art. I did the rigging myself. It's this. I'm I'm actually re-rigging it at the moment because it's. I have very simple rigging at the moment. It's not like fully rigged, but I'm working on that myself too. And it's it's tricky. It's a very tricky thing. <laughs> Been working on it for a while. I will be working on it for a while longer. But yeah, I, Addy's art is just so gorgeous. I love it. Yeah, oh, I feel like Eileen's trying to defuse the situation but doesn't know how. Yeah, I I think so too. I think that pointing out the bug is like her trying to break the awkward silence. <laughs> uh, it also surprises me as well that that Allison isn't scared of bugs. Like I don't know, I'm just like she feels like she would be startled by bugs. So it's nice knowing that she doesn't. She's just like, oh yeah, it's a little beetle. It's fine. Oh, it looks great. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I did work hard on it. And I'm working hard on the new rigging too. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be better than this one. <laughs> After a little bit of effort, the little fellow gets off my glove and onto the soil, scampering off a little faster for the experience. It won't hurt me. <laughs> what, just another one? Just another of your animal friends? I'm not exactly in the mood for being teased. Hmm. It's the kind of thing you can learn in books or on the internet. 
Eileen laughs it off, but I'm sure she can tell I'm being snippy. Okay, Alison, I got a great tip for you here. If you're not in the mood to be teased, you say, sorry, I'm not in the mood to be teased. And if the other person is decent, you won't be teased anymore. <laughs> it's a good tip. It's also very hard to do. It's, it sounds like the most straightforward thing. It is very hard to do. It's a very learned experience. Took me a while to actually stand up for myself and speak with things like that, but it's it's a very, very, very good tip that I would pass on to anybody. <laughs> ah. With that, she stands up, putting her thermos and cup back into her backpack before dusting herself off. Ready to keep going, then? We've still got the afternoon ahead of us. Sure. Yeah, sure. I try to put as much enthusiasm into it as I can muster, but I get the distinct feeling that I'm just along for the ride now. And so she pushes forward without looking back at me. I, th I think that's just how Eileen is. That's just what she does. Eileen's not even going to realize it would be interpreted as her not caring about Alison. I feel like she's probably taking them to a really nice place. It's going to be like, I really wanted to show you this view or something. <laughs> this is always where I am with her. Whether I'm watching Eileen paint or watching her hike, I'm always far behind her with eyes on her back. Oh, Alison. I want to pat her on the head. Tell her it's okay. With a wave to her father as his car disappears down the road, Eve takes my hand in hers as we start off down the street. Oh, I guess that's just the whole hike then. Okay. With the weather particularly nice today and Eve needing to burn off some energy, we decided to take a grand tour of the local town. Her pace is thankfully slower than her sister's with my sore legs needing a rest after the excursion yesterday. I had wanted to do this with Eileen, but she couldn't be dissuaded from painting in her room. There wasn't much fight in me to argue with her, so that was that. Maybe some time away from her is for the best. Even people who like each other sometimes need a break, I think. Yeah, you know what, well, that's really true too. I, I feel like, especially with Eileen probably being used to being alone, as an introvert myself, it is exhausting always being around people, even if you like the people. Even if you love spending time with the people, it's still exhausting. <laughs> so yeah, I think give Eileen a bit of recharge time. They'll, they'll be okay. I, they'll both be okay, I think. The old wooden storefronts hardly loom over us, being mostly just a couple of stories tall, themselves dwarfed by the forested hills behind. Strolling around is a much nicer way to take it in than clutching to Rose on the back of her bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice here. <laughs> kind of boring sometimes, though. Thinking about it, I could see that being the case for a child. The few people out and about today are basically all greying older folk hobbling along as I look around us. Such a pleasant atmosphere has its downsides. My thinking's interrupted by a ping from my pocket. Who dat? Who dat? Grace, no! Thank you for the head pad. Thank you for petting me. Hello! As we stop for a moment, I pluck my phone from my pocket and unlock it. Who is it? Um... Who is it? <laughs> Who is this? There's, there's no picture. Um. Oh, it's her dad. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, okay, her dad wouldn't have a profile picture. That's fair. Just my dad asking how I'm doing. Hi, Alison. How are things going? No punctuation, just two texts. I like that. I love the thought that he, like, doesn't know how to, like, make a new line, so he just sends two texts. <laughs> it's a very dad thing. 
As she stands on tiptoes, trying to look over the phone in curiosity, I get an idea. Idea? Crouching a little and bringing the phone level with her as she sets herself back down, I try to hold it steady. <gasps> Take a selfie! I'll send him a photo, stay still. <gasps> oh, bless her. <laughs> In response, Eve fixes her posture to stand up prim and proper, dusting herself off to look as good as possible. It's charming how seriously she takes this. That's really sweet. That, oh, she's a sweetheart. She's so sweet. <laughs> Ta-da! With a tap and click, the photo's saved and quickly sent on to Dad as a message. Friend's sister is showing me around. Sounds like you're having fun. Yup, yay! <laughs> How are things there? Back home safe and sound. Your brothers are driving us nuts. We'll be glad to have you back. <laughs> Sounds like things are the same as ever then. See you in a few days. Miss you. <laughs> Take care, enjoy the last of your trip. I smile and lock the phone once more, slipping it back where it belongs. I have to stop myself from counting down the days left here. I don't want to start regretting this trip and once again wishing I was home. Hey, what's your family like? Hmm, totally different, I'll say that much. I have mom, dad, three brothers and a cat. We all live in the city and it's really busy and noisy every day. They're nice though. It'll be good to get back home. Or to be back home. Satisfied with my answer, Eve pulls me forward as we begin our tour in earnest. As she points out this and that though, my thoughts aren't about Eve or my family, but stuck on wanting to be doing this with Eileen. Oh, <laughs> oh she... <laughs> It makes sense. You want to do stuff like this with with the ones you love. <laughs> oh. Space dinosaurs, thank you for the hydrate. Let me have some tea. I think this is the tea moment. Let me open my tea flask. Enjoy my warm berry tea. <laughs> I've got a lovely fruit tea of strawberry raspberry cranberry flavor today i say today as though i have any other tea that's that's the tea i always have <laughs> i literally don't drink other teas it's just that one but thank you for the hydrate just as it was whenever i watched her paint i feel like i'm watching her life from outside rather than sharing our time together oh i wasn't ready for that oh <laughs> I don't doubt that she likes me. She certainly likes me in a physical sense. I like those times too, but I feel like I'm the only one who wants us to become closer in more than just a physical sense. I'm the one who planned our first date. I'm the one who asked to come here. Now, I'm wondering if Eileen even wanted any of this. The one time I thought Eileen wanted to share something with me, she was just using me to distract herself from her problems. Problems that she wouldn't talk to me about. <sighs> All I can do is sigh. <laughs> oh, it's, oh. it's so painful because I can understand her thinking as well. But it's, oh. oh, people. People are so different. All I can do is sigh. Mm. What's wrong? Just a shame your sister was busy, that's all. Allison! <laughs> Is Eileen having a good time in college? Huh? Why do you ask? Mom said she was worried about Eileen since she moved out, but when Eileen's around, they always argue. Oh. Is she really alright? Eve says this with genuine worry in her voice. Eileen's parents really do care about her, even if she doesn't think so sometimes. I 
Eileen's fine. Every day she's making pretty paintings and having fun with friends, and she's helped me a lot since I met her. Eileen's always been fine now that I think about it. Ever since we met, I've merely watched her as she lived her life. Since getting together, has anything really changed? For all our intimacy, she still treats me the same way she always has, all while relentlessly pursuing her ambition. <laughs> you see, Mom is always worried anyway. It's true. Huh, it's... But it's... Uh, it's like, at the same time though, like, she still treats me the same way she always has. Like, with a smile? Like, she... No, she... I think Alison expected things to, like, magically change. I think it's like, it's the kind of thing where, like, in, like, Hollywood romances, like, people agree to go out and then suddenly everything changes and it's, like, magical everything, the world is different. But it's it's not it's not like that in real life. Like most of the time, most of the time it's you just keep being friends with someone, but with more with a bit of romance. I don't know. I, yeah, I think the problem mostly is Allison is a romantic. She likes romance films. She's a very romantic person, and I think Eileen doesn't really. Care? Saying she doesn't care feels like a mean thing to say, but I, I don't think Eileen is like drawn to the romance side of things. She's, it's, or or she just doesn't know how to honestly like, <laughs> doesn't know how to be romantic. Honestly, I wouldn't either. I'm I'm like the least romantic person in the world. I, I don't, I I can't do romance. I'm I like <laughs> I like fictional romance a lot, and I think it's very sweet and nice. But if it in real life, I'd... Romance just kind of makes me feel awkward. <laughs> it's like if someone starts being romantic towards me, I'm... I, um, I say thank you and walk away. <laughs> so I, I kind of relate with Eileen there. I'm... I wouldn't know how to be romantic. No, I can't think like that. I'm getting myself wound up. Your parents are nice, aren't they? She gives an enthusiastic nod. They think you're nice too, since you hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> At least they think I'm useful, I suppose. I never realized it before, but having a little sister is really fun. Not that I mind my own siblings, but three older brothers aren't quite the same company. <laughs> Let's see some more of town before we have to go back then, okay? Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, oh, I think Alison has a point about the unequal balance in their relationship, but to address that takes being careful and patient. Yeah, exactly. That's... It's... I, I do... I really understand Alison's feelings, too. Like, it makes sense. If you love someone, you want to know everything about them. You want to share things with them. And Eileen is just naturally a very closed-off person, probably because of her upbringing. She... She's going to be wary about opening up with things like that because she's never really done it before and I feel like she wouldn't really like that vulnerability that's gonna make her uncomfortable so it's the kind of thing that needs to be really carefully managed but if we know anything about Alison it's that um she likes to say things <laughs> so it's uh it's I understand. I understand them both. <laughs> Finally back from our trip after a bus ride back, Eve bounds through the door as I drag myself in and close it behind us. I don't know how kids can have so much energy. Eileen stands with a glass of water, looking nonplussed at our entrance before noticing the new book held tightly under Eve's arm as she skips over to the living room sofa. Allison. You didn't. I can spare that much money. It can be her Christmas present from me. You're enjoying having a little sis, aren't you? <laughs> she got me. <laughs> hmm? How's the painting going? Hmm. Need to go down the city. Uh, need to go down to the city soon for supplies and stuff. No art supply stores around here. Want to come? 
So I'm along for the ride as usual. Now it's like it's... Alison. Alison. It's like the thing here is... That's... I'm pretty sure that's Eileen's way of inviting her. She wouldn't invite her if she didn't want her to come. Like, she, she wants her to come in some level. But I can also see how Alison would just be like, well, she's, she's only asking because she feels like she has to. Huh. <laughs> You're subtle as a brick. <laughs> I see. It's it's a good way to go about things sometimes. Like, I... I much prefer, like, straightforward co communication. Like, if, if I ever do something that makes someone feel bad, I would much rather they just go, hey, that thing you said made me feel bad. Because then... I know, and I can apologize properly and be like, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. I didn't realize. As opposed to like, if I was never told about it and then I maybe did it again and upset them more. Like, I'd always much rather know. <laughs> I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I want to know everything. Even if it's like a bad thing, I would much rather know than not know. Ah, so I'm along for the ride as usual. I feel bad for thinking bad thoughts about her, but I can't muster any real want to come along. I'd just be baggage while she did her thing. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Still tired from yesterday. Sure. Suit yourself. I'll be straight back afterwards. We're having pizza for dinner tonight, by the way. Ah, good. The two of us briefly wonder how to continue conversation, but I can't think of anything to add. Oh, this is going to be so awkward until they talk things through. I'm. <laughs> the question is, who's going to try first? I genuinely don't know. With that, she wanders back to her room to keep painting. I feel like I should follow, at least to see how her painting's coming along, but my feet feel stuck. left to mill about alone as Eve can be heard happily humming to herself from the sofa, I decide to turn around and head back out the door for some for some... I was, I was just going to automatically say fresh air there. Just air. The warm afternoon air is starting to fade by now, causing me to push my hands into my pockets to try and save whatever warmth I can. At the rate the weather's going, it's sure going to be a cold Christmas. At least the snowmen are liking it! Still standing tall as they guard Eileen's house from the front yard. Yeah, you're the same. Saying it badly is better than not saying it. Yeah, I'm... It's definitely been like a learned skill for me. I used to be so bad at communication. Uh, I used to never want to mention anything in case I made other people feel bad. But I, it would be to like my own detriment. Like, if people upset me, I wouldn't say anything. Because... I would say to myself, oh, I'm just being too sensitive. They didn't mean anything bad. It's my own fault. So I wouldn't mention anything. And then all of like the bad feelings would just build up until they get to like a really unmanageable point. And that is not good. It's not good. I don't recommend it. I'm very glad I'm better at communication now. That's all I can say. <laughs> I've gotten really good at communication. Like the older I get, the more I realize how important it is to make sure you you do communicate like that because it's so easy for intent to get lost and sometimes if you don't clarify it people can, can get the wrong impression as well especially through text especially like online it is so easy to misjudge text <laughs> so that's why i i really really like communication it's it's real good i'm a i'm a fierce communication appreciator <laughs> I like that I'm saying this and my vocabulary is just slowly falling out of my head like I, I sure love to communicate says the cat girl who is forgetting words <laughs> who needs words anyway it's fine it's easy to lose sight of when inside but her house sure is big even the yard's pretty spacious, but I suppose living so far from town would help that. A nice house, enough money to live alone on her parents' dime, trips all the way to Germany. Eileen really did get a good start in life compared to me. Alison. Alison. 
Alison. Eileen is thinking the exact same thing about you, I guarantee. I guarantee Eileen is thinking the same. Eileen is thinking, oh, Alison's family, she's so close with them. They have such a great relationship. They're so close and they love each other. Alison really did get a good start in life compared to me. They're, they're, you, you know that they're, they're going to be saying that about each other. Please, stop. It's so easy to forget about what you have when you're looking at what you don't. It's... It's the, the famous phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. Like, sure, the grass may be greener on that side, but you could go across and be like, well, this grass doesn't taste as good. I want to go back to my grass. It's, it's so easy to lose sight of what you have if you're just focusing on what you don't have. <laughs> Eileen really did get a good start in life compared to me. It annoys me a little that she doesn't seem to see that, especially when it's her parents paying for her apartment. Alison, please. Oh no, please, please, I'm... The grass doesn't taste as good. I realized saying that afterwards. In my mind, I was imagining, like, a cow or a sheep. <laughs> Not a human. I was imagining, like, a sheep. Just being like, oh, the grass in that field looks so much nicer than my field. And the sheep is taken to that field and it misses its first field. But uh, I never specified that I was thinking that. So you're probably just picturing a, a whole human being just crawling in a field. Eating grass and just going, oh, this grass doesn't taste as nice. I didn't... I didn't I really didn't clarify that. And see, that's why communication's really good too, because you making me clarify that helped everyone realize what I was getting at, as opposed to everyone imagining people eating grass. So thank you, Rika. Thank you, Rika, that's a great example. Nomming from neighbors' gardens, am I? I don't even like the taste of grass. I can actually say that. When I was a child, I was I was a weird child and I did eat grass once and it didn't taste good. <laughs> it, it, I don't eat grass, I promise. <laughs> the closest to grass I get is lettuce. I do like lettuce, but I promise I don't eat grass. <laughs> anyway, anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, me, me crying at Allison. I remember. Yeah, I'm I'm not here to touch grass. We we're, were eating it. <laughs> Just feel like you need to go outside and touch grass. Like eat grass, got it. <laughs> sure, I'm a cat and not a cow. Hi, no, no, Momo's the cow. Momo's the cow. I'm the cat. I'm. <laughs> I don't eat the grass. I promise. But hi. What if it was cat grass, though? I'm, I'm only half cat. I'm a cat girl. The, the food is the girl side of things. I also don't eat cat food. That, that's the girl side of things. <laughs> also, Gambler, hello! Welcome! Welcome, welcome. It's okay that you're late. This is a late stream anyway for me. But a welcome, welcome! We were just talking about how I don't eat grass. <laughs> oh my god, I can't... <laughs> I think you can tell it's getting late for me because, like, yeah, I I sure just said that. I I, I sure just said yeah, the grass is greener, and then you go over to the other side and eat the grass. <laughs> oh, I don't even know why I imagine it like that in my head. Like the grass is always greener on the other side. I always imagine like a sheep in a field, looking at the next field over. I don't imagine it with people. My brain just instantly supplies the sheep for that. It's also the exact same shield as field as like when I'm counting sheep in my head. If I'm counting sheep, they are jumping over that fence between the two fields where the grass is greener on the other side. My my mental world is it's just two fields and a sheep. That's <laughs> that's all that's there. There's nothing else in there. It's probably healthy. Yeah, I think it's healthy not to eat grass as a human. I would think it's healthier to eat, like, actual food. 
<laughs> like, if, if you're going to eat food, at least have nutrients in it. <laughs> oh my goodness, hi! Hi, first time you're catching me live and the whole grass conversation is already gross. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful first impression. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to catch me live, hi! <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, most people have two wolves inside them. I have sheep. <laughs> inside you are two sheep. One is in one field, one is in the other. The grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> oh, right, where was I? Oh yeah, Alison catastrophizing, I remember. Painting alone in a room, hiking alone in the woods, living alone in an apartment too big for one person. Is that really independence? Moving out, away from her parents, but still relying on them for everything? Swear to God, Alison, you better not say any of this stuff to Eileen, because this is so rude. This is a really rude line of thought you're going down right now. Also, Plutonic Clamp! Hello! Plutonic Lamp sounds cool. Like, powered with plutonium? Thank you for the follow! Welcome, welcome! Hope you enjoy your time here! Yep, <laughs> we're back to being frustrated with Alison. Oh, that... <laughs> Try as I might to get closer to Eileen, I can't help but feel like I'm just hanging around her. When I'm looking at her back, is it just because she's always ahead of me? Why shouldn't she turn around to look at me? I wonder what I really am to Eileen. The fact that I can't work out an answer makes me restless. As a lump starts to form in my throat, I quickly decide to wander back inside. All I'm doing is making myself feel worse by dwelling on all this. I should make the most of my time here, given I only have a few days left. Okay. Okay, good. Good for Alison. I am proud of Alison for recognising that it's bad to dwell, because that's a really easy pit to fall in. <laughs> it's really easy to fall in the pit of dwelling and then things get worse. So I am proud of her for that. Oh, I'm the first ever person that says your username right. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad I managed to, to say it right. But welcome in. Thank you for following. I hope you're enjoying your time here. I'm, I'm realizing that with you following now, you probably were just hearing me talk about eating grass. <laughs> so thank you for deciding to stick around. Hi. <laughs> oh. oh, Alison. You know, I think the main reason why I feel so frustrated with Alison more than Eileen is because she really reminds me of myself. <laughs> like, she reminds me of myself when I was younger, which is why even though Eileen does a lot of frustrating things, I find myself getting more frustrated by Alison because I recognize it. I'm like, I recognize that from myself. And I'm like, I, I, I know this line of thought. Ah. <laughs> Oh, the grass conversation was unironically one of the most entertaining grass. things you've heard all week. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it, honestly. <laughs> honestly, I'm still laughing about it too. I'm Oh my my beautiful brain that is full of grass. Good times. Ha huh. Good times indeed. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate too. You know what? I'm I'm going monster this time. We're getting monster this time. I've managed to demonstrate pretty well. The brain cells aren't in here today, so... Let's try and get one back. Nice. Thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> Grass. Huh. Oh, thank you for the posture check as well. Oh, let me have a, a big stretch. Ah, big stretch. Sit up straight. Sit up straight, stop being frustrated at Alison. It's okay, we're out together now. With Eve! Ah. The park makes for a peaceful sight as we enter, the three of us slipping between the low wooden barriers as we step from the rough concrete car park onto the snow-covered grass. A bundled up Eve clings tightly to Eileen and I with both of her little hands. Oh! Each of us on either side of her. A bag of old bread swings away at Eileen's other side, destined for the local wildlife. I'd feel like a killjoy to say bread isn't good for them. 
<laughs> I was about to say that. I was about to say that exact thing, but... <laughs> It's okay, it's just, it's just the ones, right? Next time we'll buy birdseed. With the two of us acting as babysitters thanks to Eileen's parents working, we decided it'd be better to head out, uh, to head outside rather than let her vegetate on the couch watching cartoons all day. <laughs> it would be better if they ate grass, am I right? I'm never gonna live this down, am I? This is gonna be a bit forever now, isn't it? It's gonna be like, okay, Liri may not cause arson. She may not commit arson, but she does eat grass, am I right? <laughs> uh, huh. Pairs really nicely with the monster energy. Tired from the walk, I take a seat on the swings facing the lake as Eileen mothers around Eve. <laughs> Tugging at the girl's scarf to pull it tight, Eileen hands over the bag of bread for the ducks before ruffling her hair affectionately. Wait, I want to do that too. I want to do that too. Give me a sec. There we go. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I'm like, if, if you get to ruffle Eve's hair, then so do I. <laughs> I wonder if that's why Eileen does that to me, now that I think of it. I hope not in like a sisterly sense, because that would then get a bit weird. But no, I think that is like how Eileen shows her affection. <laughs> With her sister having finished her fussing, Eve turns and starts for the shore while Eileen watches her intently. Be careful around the water, Eve! Okay. Okay. The ducks peacefully floating about the still lake start flapping about excitedly, quickly realizing that the girl waddling towards them comes bearing food. Satisfied that Eve isn't going to topple over in her rush and flop in, Eileen wanders back towards me and seats herself on the other swing, all the while keeping a keen eye out. It looks like nobody else is here at all. It is getting rather cold, but it's more likely people being busy with the holiday sales. I'd think the lake to be frozen over given how still it is, save for the birds floating about. She's cute. She is, she's so cute. Yeah. She's such a little sweetheart, I love Eve so much. While Eileen smiles warmly at her sister, I struggle to do the same. I'll soon have to make the call for Rose to pick me up, after all, leaving behind this lovely town. Eileen, Eve, their parents, I'm not sure when I'll get to see them again. Eve clumsily crumbs the bread in her gloved hands, chucking it out into the lake with varying degrees of success. Half the crumbs end up dropping to the ground at her feet, but she doesn't seem to notice. Is something up? You've been kind of quiet over the last couple of days. Please let this be communication time. Please. It is time to communicate. Please. I really don't get how you're such an upbeat person in general, though. Nor do I get how she's so comfortable being so alone, so apart. The more I'm around her, the more different I feel we are. I just think it's better to see the best in people. Mm, she's so innocent and naive. Ah. I have to admit, I wish I could be like that. <laughs> Why not try being more friendly in general? Every time I see you, you're closing yourself off to focus on painting or trekking out in the wilderness. Mm. Not the worst way she could have worded that, but not the best either, I don't think. The more I get tied up with people, the harder it is to do what I want to do. You should know that better than most, with Caprice and all. I can... I can sense Eileen's getting defensive now. See, the, the problem with this is, like... The way Allison brought that up was... I, I know she wouldn't intend it that way, but it was quite combative. It was, like challenging Eileen and 
any person, like if you're challenged with something, your instant reaction is to defend yourself. And it means that you're you're like you're more focused on defending yourself than like really taking the points into account. I'm very worried about this. You shouldn't talk <laughs> so badly about her all the time. No. She just wants everyone around her to enjoy themselves. And so Eileen's getting on the defensive. And then she's shooting out the barbs as well, which is making Allison get defensive. And they're both going to be... Instead of, like, trying to share their point with the other person, they are trying to shoot down the other person's suggestion. Like, instead of listening to the other person and considering it, they're both in defense mode now. They are both fully in combative, defensive. This is not the kind of atmosphere you want to have a serious conversation in. <laughs> I'm a little taken aback at how firm my tone is, but I'm starting to get tired of how she's always so critical. Oh, I think this is... Ugh. Huh. Oh, this is so worrying. I'm. Th I feel like this is gonna be like their first proper big argument. I'm. Th I'm so. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny because if they articulated the exact same sentences differently, the conversation would go in a completely different direction. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's just like if Allison brought it up in a more like concerned way, like, uh, I don't understand. How is it that you can be so alone all the time? As opposed to like, don't understand how you can be so alone all the time because I don't do that. It's th like the, it's the same point being put across, but different like intonation, which can really make a huge difference. But uh, you didn't write first, no, but when you were reading through it in development, turning everyone low key hates Caprice into a plot point made you so sad. Ah, yeah, I'm I love Caprice so much. I think she's so great. I would I would also be sad. <laughs> Uh, she's so she's just really enthusiastic <laughs> it's like I can understand getting tired out by her but like hating her feels how she's she's so sweet I love her but yeah I mean growing up in that family almost anyone would be reflexively defensive yeah that's another part of the problem too like Eileen has probably been shot down with her suggestions all her life like I want to you want to do art? No, that's bad. You can't do that. Fight to do it. She's instinctively got that defensiveness to her, which means if you do want to have that kind of communication, you need a little more tact. And the problem with Allison is she's a sweetheart and she wants the best, but she doesn't fully understand other people's perspectives, so she doesn't always have that tact. <laughs> And it's so painful because I see where both sides are coming from and it's just, if they could just communicate it properly, they'd be able to work it out. But they don't know how to. They, they have such different conversation styles. They have such different problem solving methods and methods of like just living in general as well. Like they go about things so differently that they don't realize how the other person quite works yet. And it's, yeah. Even then, Eileen's the one who addressed the situation and tried to resolve things just now. Yeah, she brought it up in the best kind of way. Just saying, I've noticed you've been quiet. I was wondering what's up. And then Allison immediately came out with the, the kind of, the kind of thing where I, I think she wouldn't have snapped like that if she hadn't been, like, bottling it in. Like, the fact that she's been bottling this in means that when it's coming out, she hasn't had time to, like, word it tactfully. It just came out. And so at that point, Eileen is instinctively going to be defensive. Like, whoa, whoa, I, I, I didn't mean for this. Like, what? <laughs> huh. All right, back to this anyway. <laughs> A little taken aback at how firm my tone is, but I'm starting to get tired of how she's always so critical. I force myself to keep my eyes on Eileen, despite her own surprise. 
Maybe it's for the best if I clear the air and talk about this directly. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Oh, I'm... I really hope she can word this well. Come on, Alison. Come on, Alison. I'm rooting for you. <sighs> Her concentration is broken by Eve giggling loudly in the distance, the birds enthusiastically crowding around in front of her and occasionally flapping away at the water. <sighs> Come on. What's this about? I get the feeling something's on your mind. Okay, communication. Okay. Okay, I think... I think the words are going to get harsh, but I I believe in them both to to get through it. I'm because they you can tell how much they care about each other. It's uh... it feels like we're hanging around each other, but not actually. I pause for a moment to phrase my thoughts correctly, trying not to let emotions cloud my thinking. Allison, yes, yes, Allison, yes. Proud of you. Eileen thankfully patiently waits for me. I guess it feels like I'm along for the ride. It doesn't feel like I'm really there with you. This is what I hoped for. I I was expecting the worst. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's, this is this is the kind of stuff that she probably should have shared a couple days ago, but. <laughs> Uh, what, here? We've been spending a lot of time together and we've had some nice time to ourselves, right? Yeah, like, Eileen doesn't even recognize that. She's so used to, like, being alone that she's just like, well, I'm. Allison is in the room with me, so we're spending time together, right? Whereas what Allison actually wants isn't just for them to be around each other, it's like the quality time. It's the quality time aspect of it. It's... <sighs> is that all this is to you? No, oh, she's, she's getting defensive again. No. Oh. As silence reigns, the fact that she even needs to think about this is a bit upsetting. No, oh, it's... I don't know how relationships are supposed to go, but it feels like we both have very different ideas about it. Yeah, honestly, like the framing here as well feels even more nervous. It's her. Uh... What am I supposed to say? Is there something more you want from me? I'm just not as clingy as you are. Oh. <laughs> And now she just called her clingy. This is... <laughs> Oof. Oof. Clingy? I just want to be by your side. You would have gone off without me the other day if you felt like you could. Yeah, but I was being considerate of your feelings. Is that a problem? Ooh. Uh. It... It just feels like you'd rather I wasn't there. I like being with you, you know that. But I've been fine on my own all this time, too. I don't need you to be there. <laughs> Poor Eve's gonna come back from duck feeding and witness the rubble of an argument. <laughs> oh, goodness. Can you imagine her just, like, turning around to, like, the most horrifically tense scene and then just turning back and be like, I am joining the ducks now. <laughs> Also, Sanya Mita, hello! Welcome, welcome. And thank you for the head fat hydrate posture check. I'm gonna have a big stretch. I have a big stretch. And a sip of my drink. I do it. <laughs> oh. Well, it's like, it's, it is an important thing to go through, though. Like, the... The first disagreement, like, nobody's ever going to agree with someone else all of the time. It's about how you deal with it. It's about how you work through it. It's not about having the argument in the first place. It's about how you deal with it. <laughs> yeah. It started off so well, but now it's like, ugh. 
just because of this one, you suddenly know how Eileen feels. Like, yeah, after the sentence is... It's like, the... Eileen is an introvert. She's used to being on her own. She's She is fine with being on her own. But, like... Allison is definitely, like, she's in the, the moment where she's just like, I just want to spend every moment with you. I'm... And I don't think Eileen is that kind of person. Like, <laughs> she she needs her time to her space, too. But that's why they... <sighs> but it feels bad, because, like, hearing this line here... If this was said, like, after they're having a great time, then I think Allison would understand it and be like, Oh yeah, you need your alone time as well. But because of everything being so tense and all the defensiveness, Allison is 100% going to pass this as, I don't need you, ever. I just don't need you. <laughs> and that's the part that hurts me. Even though I always want to spend more time with her, she doesn't even care whether or not I'm there. See, I knew she'd interpret it like that. It's... <laughs> Yeah, in all honesty, tell, telling someone you don't need them is never a good sentence. I know, it's... Especially in a situation like this, it's... Uh... You have it so together. I've always admired that about you. Maybe you have it too together. I swear to God, if Allison brings up money... I'm, I'm gonna flip the table. I'm... <laughs> Before coming here, I didn't realize how good a life you left behind when you moved away. To drop everything here, including Eve, to pursue art at a community college? From the way you talked about your family, I thought they must be really hard she's, on she's you. Calling that note. They just want what's best. I mean, the apartment you have seems like it wouldn't be cheap for them to cover, for one. <sighs> I'm not here anymore. I'm gone. <sighs> she sure went there. This is like the one thing I was hoping she wouldn't say. This is... <laughs> oof. Oof. Oof, oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm also gonna join the ducks. Let's, let's go. <sighs> because I don't hear that enough from them every time I'm around here. <sighs> Can we just drop this? Mm -hmm. I like being around you because you don't bring up that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think this problem is too far out of the bag now to stuff it back in, Eileen. I'm sorry. I. <sighs> is that all you want from me? A quiet girlfriend who doesn't ask questions and leaves you alone? <laughs> Eileen takes to her feet, her mood significantly souring. While I freeze up, I don't feel like shrinking from her for once. Am I only here to distract you from your parents? Uh... Oh, I'm in so much pain. Myra, hello! <laughs> Hi, you joined at the worst time in the world. They're having an argument. They're having their first couple's argument. And they're bringing out really mean things. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, they need to work through this. This is this is bad stuff to be bottled away, but it still feels bad that it's coming out like this. I'm. Uh, You're the one who begged to come. I told you that you could come precisely because I didn't think you'd go sticking your nose into my life. <laughs> but I want to learn more about you. That's what having a relationship is. That's up to me, not you. This is why you shouldn't have come in the first place. Oh no. She points in the general direction of her house. I'm used to enduring their crap already. I didn't need you here to make things worse. I'm already hearing from them about how my girlfriend has a better life path than I do. Duh. So that's my fault? 
Alison? Like, like her parents being rich is her fault? Hello? Both ways. Both ways. <laughs> he literally joined the stream before the scene started. Why does this hurt so much? It does hurt. I think it hurts more knowing how much they care about each other and how much is being so misunderstood right now. There's, it's... <laughs> You're adding the perfect emote for this moment. If it, it really is. It is. It is. <sighs> I think I'm shaking. My eyes are stinging from salt wanting to flood out. Maybe they have a point. Did you think any of this through beyond just escaping them? Is that all our relationship is, too? I had my life on track before I even met you. Just because you and Caprice want to come along and try to push me around, it doesn't mean I'm going to derail myself. Is that how she thinks of it? Didn't she agree to the art club? Didn't she agree to date me? Didn't she say she loves me? To be fair, the art club was really, really pushed on her. It was like the path of least resistance to agree to it. It's... But she did agree to date her. She did say she loves her. Uh... Oh! <laughs> Eve, I beg of you, don't turn around. Oh, hey, who's that? Hi. Um, um, um. Hearing the sound of footsteps on the snow, the two of us turn in unison towards Eve, standing a few yards away with an empty bread bag held in her hands. No! <laughs> no, baby, baby, no! No! Baby, it's okay, no! Is something wrong? She looks so upset, no! <laughs> Eileen looks to me for a long while, her face full of frustration. I don't think either of us really knows what we should say next, even without Eve being around. Settling herself with a long breath, Eileen smiles as she turns back to Eve. I don't think I'll ever get used to how she shifts her entire demeanor like that. <laughs> I don't think it's a comfy evening anymore, hi Dima. It's... it's not... I mean, it's still been comfy times, but this this situation isn't comfy. It's like, it's really painful because it does feel like these are problems that do need to be worked through. The, this could not just be left to linger and stay bottled up. But they need to talk about this. They need to talk about this in like... When, when they're not both heated, like, when they've calmed down a bit, they need to go through it, like, a bit calmer. At the moment, they are- they're so emotional that they're just coming out with things that they wouldn't say otherwise. Like, any other situation, Allison would not go there. But because of how heated things have gotten, it's- it's very easy to just, like, go away like that. Honestly, pretty crazy how this game is written as much from Eileen's point of view as it is Allison's. Yeah, it's really interesting how you can... You can identify with both of them, even though it's Allison's point of view. You still see Eileen's point of view so clearly as well. It's so... it's so well written. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's such a, a well-told story. But yeah, it's so painful, but I... I think the reason it's so painful is because of how realistic it is. And because of how kind of necessary it is to work through this as well, it's... Oh, it hurts. Uh. Everything's fine. Don't worry. It's about time we headed back home. Uh. But I want to keep feeding the ducks! We ran out of bread. Sorry. I'd rather identify with the grass at the moment. Honestly, me too. Me. It's me right here. I'm just this... This this reed in the lake right now, that's me. <laughs> that's going to be hard without any more bread. Come on, it's about time we had some food ourselves. <sighs> she gives one final glance back before taking Eve's hand in her own and walking on ahead. And once again, Allison is looking at her back as she walks away. It feels so bad. Ha. <sighs> feels bad. 
Oh, no, wait, this is devastating. I saw this CG to begin with and I thought it was really nice, and now it's just emotional devastation. No. I thought I was someone important to Eileen, but I feel more like I'm just being used to make herself feel better while she lives for her work. I know I have my faults. I'm not good enough at art to share the hobby with her, and I was barely even able to help cook a simple dinner. I'm trying to get better, though, and that's thanks in part to her. The image I had of her is starting to become difficult to see. Who was the Eileen I admired? The beautiful girl in the beautiful apartment with the beautiful paintings? This Eileen is someone so at odds with her family she decided to only care about herself. That's not true and you know it is. <laughs> Alison, please. Ugh. As I watch her leave hand in hand with Eve, she looks ever farther away from me. Maybe she's only so far away because we aren't walking on the same path. Pain. Pain and suffering. The jingle of the old bell above the grocery store door rings out as we step through into the street. There's a slight chill to the air, but that hasn't stopped a good few elderly people from hobbling along the town's streets. Aside from needing to tell Eve she couldn't have this sugary snack or that as we walked around, shopping ended up being a quiet affair. Eileen went through the shelves with her usual military efficiency as she ticked off her mental checklist. Yesterday's argument between us hasn't helped, but that's not the only reason for Eileen's quietness. She might not even realize it herself, but it's small things like that which remind me of her solitary nature. That ability to tune others out so easily isn't something that comes naturally, at least to me. For want of helping at least a little, I took one of the overstuffed bags we ended up with to carry myself. Thanks. Thanks for coming and helping carry all this. Sure. It's fine. I wanted to see a bit of the town anyway. Eileen! Can we sit down? I'm tired. It's not that far to the car. Hey. Wouldn't hurt to rest a bit, would it? There's a bench right up there. <laughs> Taking Eve's side doesn't win me any favors, but Eileen knows she's been overruled. <laughs> Mokurai! You're back. Welcome back. It is. We have gotten to the emotional devastation. Oh my goodness, why won't you word things nicer to each other? You sillies, you clearly care about each other, but you're saying the meanest things. Yes, we've gotten to that part. <laughs> Welcome back. Ah, the whole thing is just me going, you do need to talk about this. You are using the wrong words. Don't say that. Oh, she said that. <laughs> ah. Yeah, the the roller coaster of the game right after the grass conversation is wild. No, wait, you're right. Right after my ridiculous eating grass conversation, we just had like the most devastating. Oh, hold on. Oh, that that die got stuck on my head. <laughs> we just got like the most emotional moment. <laughs> game was like you have giggled about grass for too long. It's time to suffer. Taking Eve's side doesn't win me any favors, but Eileen knows she's been overruled. As Eve jumps back onto the seat without any further prompting needed, Eileen and I carefully set our grocery bags on the ground and join her. Her parents sure chose a nice place to live. More a town than a city, the wooden buildings and stone retaining walls give a distinctly old-fashioned natural look. Even the Christmas decorations are understated, amounting to the occasional sign behind a, a shop window. The odd person walks to and fro as we sit back, paying us little heed as they slowly go about their day. You to watch the VOD later? Yeah, it's it's mostly just me being... crying. <laughs> crying in pain because I understand them both and I've been there. It's too real, it's too real. Huh. This should be the easiest occasion possible to make idle chatter with Eileen. As time lingers on, though, the silence between us does also. 
Eve doesn't notice, of course. Her little legs swing up and down as she lazily watches the odd car go past. As she suddenly brightens up and points ahead, Eileen and I follow her gaze. Ooh! Inside the small ice cream parlor over the road, an old man in a pinstripe uniform in a pinstripe uniform turns the sign behind the glass door from closed to open. No. Don't even think about it. Uh, come on, I think good. You know what Mum said. You can't just have ice cream whenever you want. Besides, why would you even want ice cream when it's already cold? Look, you, you don't have to have a weather for ice cream. Ice cream is for any weather. Ice cream is for any weather. Eileen's answer doesn't exactly satisfy the young girl. After a moment's consideration, I take to my feet and start heading over. Allison. Allison, if you want to make amends with Eileen, then going directly against her is like the... I feel like she's being combative on purpose now. Like, this this is not the best way to deal with this. Huh. 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 Allison. <sighs> I was just feeling like getting some ice cream for myself. Might as well get her one while I'm already there, right? Strawberry! Sure thing. Two strawberry ice creams coming right up. Oh, goodness. Ugh. With our sweets quickly devoured, we finish off the last of our cones. They sure served them large here, but Eve managed to finish off hers even quicker than I did. Maybe eating ice cream is one of those skills kids are just better at. How old are the characters? They're adults. <laughs> they are, they're in university. They're university students. So um, it's that really awkward age of like being old enough to be an adult whilst also being young enough to have not been through a lot of major life experiences. It's... <laughs> And then Eve's just a baby. Eve's just a little baby. <laughs> She's like 10, maybe. <laughs> Spoiling her little sister out of spite is both funny and sad at the same time. I know, it feels so sad. It's it's so... Uh, it feels like the really bad thing to do, but also... Uh, huh. She didn't offer to get Eileen one either, which is... Mm. Without needing to be asked, Eileen pulls a tissue from a box in the bag and curtly wipes Eve's mouth. I get the feeling she'd enjoy being a mother, given how she fusses about her little sister. As Eileen looks to me, I notice that I'm smiling at her. My face collapses as she opens her mouth to speak, but visibly thinks better of it. As much as I want to make amends, I don't want to apologize if I'm not wrong. <laughs> Ow! But you're both wrong! But you're both wrong! Stop! You're both wrong! Allison! Allison, please! Allison, please! Oh. Me! Me right now! <laughs> Allison, that stubbornness is so... <laughs> Allison, you said so many really mean things. You, you, you were in the wrong for a lot of those comments. Like, oh, blah. Uh -huh. With neither of us willing to back down, nor wanting to fight with each other again, Yesterday's argument looms over us as the elephant in the room. Please, you gotta talk about this, please. You gotta talk. You gotta talk. I, s I swear. Oof. Focusing my attention on a less stressful topic, my gaze falls to Eve, the two of us sharing a brief smile. I guess that isn't long now, huh? Ow. Eve and I just look to each other, but it becomes quickly apparent that the topics reminded Eileen of something I'd been avoiding. 
You're being extra nice because you're going back, aren't you? As Eve looks to and fro between Eileen and I, I try my best to hide my disappointment in being found out. I was trying to think of a better way to break it before Eileen handled it so bluntly. It couldn't last forever, but I wanted to keep enjoying these carefree days just a little while longer. Maybe it was selfish of me to not make myself clearer, but... Wait! You're going? Oh, I love how she didn't want us to be here in the first place, and now she's sad for Alison to be going. <laughs> well, I do have my own family I want to spend time with. No! Despite my best efforts to try and deliver the news as gently as possible, her bottom lip starts to quiver. Both of us panic a little as it becomes clear Eve's about to crack. Oh my he. Lanzo and hello! Welcome, welcome! Oh goodness, welcome. I'm emotionally devastated. How's it going? Welcome. Uh, Eve? Her composure collapses as she reaches over, her face weeping as she stuffs it into my stomach and grabs at my skirt. I don't want you to go, Allison! Stay here! I want you to stay! Oh, she's so loud as well. Ah. Oh, baby. Baby. This has gone about as awfully as it could have done. Glaring at Eileen in frustration, I seem to have made my feelings clear to her as she turns rather sheepish. As Eve cries into my stomach, I stroke her shuddering head reassuringly, speaking as calmly as I can. I know, she went from despising us to loving us so much. Oh no, hopefully it's the good kind of emotional devastation. It is the kind of emotional devastating devastation that is truly devastating. And it makes me hurt a lot, but is necessary for the healing afterwards. It's like the kind of moment that needs to happen so that we can have the resolution and the resolution is going to feel so good and nice. But at the moment, we, we're not at the resolution part yet. Therefore, it hurts. <laughs> Thank you for throwing things at me as well. <laughs> Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Throw a cat at my head. I'm OK now. It's OK. It's all right. We can get through this. Come on now. Do you want me to remember you crying or with a big smile? Oh. <laughs> Eileen cares about her sister, but apparently it's not enough to not make her break the news in a gentler way. I don't think she even thought about that. That's the thing with Eileen. She wouldn't even have considered what Eve was thinking about this. She doesn't... She's been... She's so used to being alone. She she just thinks, like, about herself. Which is, like, it's a little selfish in a way. But it's, like, it's also understandable with how she's been brought up. She... I can guarantee you 100%. She would not have been thinking about Eve when she said that. She probably only realized it after she said it. And Eve started getting upset. That's when her brain would have been like, Oh. Probably shouldn't have said it like that. <laughs> So it's, it's like, it's just like, it's, she just doesn't even realize it. She doesn't realize the way she comes across. And that's why it's, that's why Allison gets so upset as well. Because Allison thinks about so many possibilities for so many things. And Eileen doesn't think in that way. So in Allison's mind, she's like, well, she clearly said this with this thing in mind. And... Eileen guaranteed would not have even like thought that far ahead, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm so sure that she would not have thought about how that would affect Eve <laughs> until after she said it. Uh, what's my favorite game? That's a, that's a really big question to ask. I, I don't think I can pick a favorite game. I like too many games. And it's like, I like so many games in different ways. I wouldn't be able to just pick a favorite. But my favorite types of games are puzzle games. I can say that much. <laughs> I'm a big puzzle game fan. I I, I consume the puzzles. Mom. They're delicious and I love them. 
Uh, so she's worse at social interactions than you thought. Yeah, it's... Eileen is... She, she's a lone wolf. She's a lone wolf. She's used to being alone. And... In that way, I think she really doesn't realize how she comes across sometimes. But I don't think it's anything malicious. I'm so sure it's never malicious. It's just like a lack of realizing. <laughs> huh. My gentle suggestion seems to work as Eve pulls back and sniffs hard, her little cheeks still stained red. She doesn't manage to smile, but I'll take what I can. The question emerges, what's more delicious? The greener grass or the puzzle case? Monster energy, thank you. Huh. There we go. That's more like the Eve I know. Uh. It's been so much fun playing with you. So, I wanted to thank you huh. with a little something for being such a good girl. Thank you for the hydrate. It is the monster energy that I'm going to drink now. Okay, there we go. I finished the can now. That's the end of my monster. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate. Oh, I know her smile here. It's like... Ugh. That's the worst part of this. The worst part of this is how... They are so genuinely tender towards each other. You know they genuinely care about each other it's just so easy to misinterpret like they have totally different ways of showing affection and things that like they need it's it's I know they can work through this but it still hurts my heart what 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 did Allison get for Eve anyway oh, you're gonna come back right don't worry. I'll come back. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you could even come to Utah and see my home for yourself. Her face changed there. Oh. -ho. As she clumsily wipes her eyes, I give a big smile. <laughs> really? Eileen just scratches the back of her head, trying not to make things worse. We might have our disagreements, but I think we can at least hold things together for Eve's sake. Oh my god, you are too early in the relationship to have a stay together for the kids situation. I... Oh my god. Oh my god. They need to work this out really soon or I'm going to explode. <laughs> I guess we can try to work something out. <laughs> Eve looks from Eileen back to me, taking my hand in both of hers with as much strength as her little hands can muster. Is Eve gonna be like conflict resolution right here? Promise me, we're gonna play again, right? Yeah. I just smile as I bring my free hand over both of hers. I promise. Ah. At that, she gives that toothy grin that I so like to see. She really is a charming little girl. I guess that settles things then. She's smiling. I'm just... <laughs> Even after everything Allison said, I'm like, oh, wow. You must really like her. <laughs> Gay people are so dramatic. <laughs> no, straight people can also be dramatic. Oh, the I've, I've seen some situations. <laughs> this is nothing compared to some of the stuff I've read about. Like... There are some horror stories out there. At least they're, they're like, they're in a disagreement, but it's not like a malicious evil I hate you disagreement. Like it's still painful, but it's, <laughs> but they're, it's, it's still, it still feels workoutable. Workoutable? Work, like they can work it out. <laughs> uh, now come on, you two. Let's get all this back to the car. Yes. <laughs> the way her face changed there, I'm like, no, my... <laughs> the way her face changes when she's turning away from Eve is... Uh... Actually going to explode if they don't work this out before the end of the holidays. A quiet yawn fills the living room as I tiredly wander through, the others in the house being quiet as mice. 
I really should have just gone to bed early like the others in hindsight. Restless from the thought of the trip back, I ended up sitting around and watching television long after Eileen left the bed. Try as I might to find her to say goodnight before going to sleep though, she's nowhere to be seen. Running through the possibilities, I wander up to Eve's room, opening the door as gently as I possibly can. The sight inside makes me feel warm just by looking at them. Oh, bless. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, oh, sweeties. Eileen sleeps on her side, wrapped around the slumbering Eve, curled up in a ball on top of her bed. Eve must have wanted one last cuddle before tucking in for the night. Oh. <laughs> just peering in. I just smile as I silently look over them, slumbering peacefully together. Even as I look at them, I wonder if I belong in their world. <laughs> we have briefly pushed it from our minds, but I think both of us know that the closer we've become, the further apart we've felt. With Eileen's peaceful sleeping face lingering in my mind, I gently close the bedroom door and head slowly back down the stairs. It's going to be hard saying goodbye to Eve. It's been nice to have a little sister, and I think she's enjoyed having two older sisters doting over her just as much. Oh, would I like to know how much is left? Oh, yes, please! Oh my god, it has been four hours. Oh my, I didn't even know... <laughs> I didn't even notice. I fully lost track of the time. Oh my goodness. It has. It's been four hours. It's already Wednesday for me. Ah, oh, one to two hours, you'd say? Oh, yeah, this is probably... I'm probably not going to finish this this stream. It's going to be... Next stream, play the, the end of this, and then the start of Twofold, I think. Oh, but it feels so bad to leave it like this. Oh, it feels so bad to leave it like this, though. I've... Hold on, let me think. Mm. Is that one to two hours general or one to two hours my time? <laughs> huh. My time. Mm. Hmm. I might keep going. I think I might keep going. I don't have to be up early tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not streaming until two tomorrow anyway. One is if we don't have big tangents. Okay, so it'll be two hours then. <laughs> but uh, I... Yeah, that'll still only be like 2am. I can get plenty of sleep. I think I'm going to keep going. Thank you. <laughs> I love that I'm just here now, like, is that, like, actual time or me going off on tangents time? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going, I think. I don't, I don't want to leave it like this. It feels bad to leave it like this. I can't. I can't leave it like this. I need to keep going. <laughs> I can't stop here. Huh. I've decided. We're keeping going. Then there's Eileen. As I try to settle myself before going to bed, I idly notice my phone left on the couch. Taking it in hand to bring it with me, I pause. Eileen's left hers on the table some distance away, the moonlight glinting off its screen. Alison. Alison. You know what you shouldn't do, Alison. My heart stings as I turn on my own and unlock the display. Only the oppressive quiet is here to keep me company as I look down, a heavy weight weighing on me as I ponder. Oh, wait, no, this could actually work out well. No, this could actually be what they need. Like, you better not leave without actually speaking to her, but writing things down is a really good way of communicating if you don't want your emotions to get in the way. Oh, Eileen always did enjoy playing with her new phone. In time, she'll hear what I was too cowardly to say. Thinking of the girl I admired so much, 
I make the call. It doesn't go answered. So you can leave an answer phone message. I see. She's never changed the, the default voicemail message. As the uncharacteristically cheerful tone asks me to leave a message, my voice is barely a whisper for fear of waking them. Okay, no, no, actually, actually, I've suddenly had a thought of what she might be trying to do here, and I swear to God, Alison, if you break up over the phone, swear to God, uh, please don't let it be that, please. When I said that we had a family with our little art club at college, I really did mean it. Did? It might not be much, but it's ours. Don't, don't pass tense this. You were an important don't, part of that. Don't pass tense this. No. 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 I pause for a moment, my heart stinging as I think of her. Even if it hurts, I know it needs to be said. I am going to explode. Maybe it was naive of me to think that way. Maybe I've been having the wrong idea all this time. I think... My throat tightens. I wipe my eyes on my sleeve. I must have looked pretty stupid. I was so excited to be in love and to have a girlfriend that I pushed and pushed to get into your space. But she didn't let me. You didn't want she me to. Did. She did let you. And even now, I can't even muster the courage to tell you this when you're awake. She literally let you in. Please, no. I don't oh. know where things will go from here. I want you to be happy. But I don't know if I can be the person who does that for you. In the end, the anger and frustration I felt at everything is nowhere to be found. There's just an emptiness. I can at least yell and vent to let go of the former, but nothing can fill that hollow feeling. Good night, Eileen. With that, I end the call. I hate this. I hate this. I'm saying that as, like, an affectionate way I love this game, but I hate this. I hate this. Okay, well, if I was undecided as to whether, conti whether to continue or not before, if I was undecided, I'm definitely decided now. There's no way we're leaving it on that. I refuse. I'm not. I can't leave it on that. <laughs> Wait, silly. Points can fill it. Yes, fill. please fill the hollow emptiness. Thank you for wasting your points. This this will fill the this will fill the void, right? This will fill the emptiness. That cat will fill the emptiness, right? Thank you for throwing a cat at me. Oh my! Oh Thank you for the hydrate. I need tea. I need tea right now. Also, you're right. The cat is a void. You can't just fill a void with void. It's just more void then. I'm having my tea. I need my tea right now. Honestly, this is the time where if I was, if I was a less responsible person, I would just crack open another can of monster. But I'm, I'm actually not going to do that. Even though I kind of want to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be good. <laughs> Void squared. Silence returns to the dark room once more. No, she just... No. She really left like that. She really left like that. I am going to scream. I'm not going to scream because it's past midnight, but I'm I'm my I'm screaming on the inside. Please know I'm screaming on the inside. 
The snowfall is thankfully light as I walk through the city, bags in hand from the day's last minute shopping downtown. People calmly walk to and fro, the occasional passerby of Eileen's country home replaced by the crowds of downtown Utah. She just left like that, I can't believe this! Duh. Briefly distracted by the huge Christmas tree, completed just in time for Christmas Eve, I think back to yesterday's events. Ugh, oh. Ugh, okay, um. When all said and done, okay, thank goodness she didn't actually leave without saying anything, because I would not. <laughs> When all said and done, leaving Eileen's family ended up being a calm affair. I gave her parents my thanks for taking care of me at such short notice, and both said they'd be more than happy to have me again. Eve had also reluctantly come to terms with my leaving by then. Then there was the matter of Eileen. Our sullen farewell was short and sweet, but maybe that was because there wasn't much left to say. No, there is so much to say, you two, you two, there's so much to say. There is too much to say that you're not saying. Ah, <laughs> oh, the game's writer really likes to say to and fro. I really like the phrase to and fro. Going to and fro. Thanks to my time in Colorado, a surprising amount of things I needed to buy before heading back to my family slept my mind. At least wandering around the city tonight's given me a chance to unwind and set my thoughts straight. Of course my phone starts ringing as soon as I appreciate some time alone to think. Pulling it from my pocket with my free hand, I'm surprised to see it's Dad. Uh, hi! Dad, hi! Hi, Alison. Not catching you at a bad time. No, no, it's fine. Sounds like you're busy. I can barely hear you. Um... Just wandering about downtown to fill some time and do some errands. Still good to be picked up tomorrow morning? Yeah. I'll be ready at the apartment with all my stuff. Sorry again about changing everyone's plans. Told you before, it's fine. Plans already had to change because of your finals. We'll pick you up tomorrow, then. It'll be good to see everyone again. Is mom doing okay? She's better, thankfully. You gave a bit of a shock when you said you weren't coming back for so long. We were all shocked. Seemed like you were having a rough time away from home, so I never expected you to go out of state like that. So they could tell. I feel a little sheepish thinking back. So you had a good trip then? I feel a chill as the last few days rush through my head. <clears throat> yeah, I did. Hmm. I don't think she sounded very convincing there. Once again, Dad can tell just from my voice. It's impossible for me to hide how I'm feeling. Something in me compels me to try anyway. What? I had fun. Well, when you're home, you'll tell us all about it, right? Of course, I'm looking forward to it. I am too. You know that you can tell me anything. Take care. I know. Bye, Dad. See you soon. Love you. With that, the call ends. I stare blankly at the screen of my phone. I'll be happy to see my family again, not to mention the warmth and liveliness of home. I have to take a deep breath, a lump in my throat forming from homesickness. I guess that feeling never goes away completely. With the phone already out, I take a moment to glance through the photos I've taken on it. A few from Colorado are most recent, which will be nice to show my parents. As I keep going back though, I stop at a photo taken just before I left for there. The screen shines brightly in the darkness of the night. The photo of everyone gathered in my apartment celebrating the end of semester, making me mull over everything that's happened since I arrived here. It's only been a few months, but my time since starting college has been an adventure already. I've learned so much, 
found so many friends and discovered so many kinds of relationships. It's such a different way of life I lead now. Oh, I just realized you're waking up in five hours. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, yes, please get some sleep. I hope you sleep well. But thank you so much for sticking around. I'm sorry you had to, like, go to bed on emotional devastation. But don't worry, I, I believe in them. I believe in them. They're gonna work this out. They're gonna work this out, I swear. <laughs> please. Please work this out, please. Ah. Huh. The smiling faces all gathered for that one moment in time. It's all thanks to those around me, like them. The phone goes dark once more as I lock it. The previous memory slipped into my pocket once more. The only light to be seen now is that cast by the Christmas tree, occasionally broken by the passing crowds. A strange sense of calm falls over me as I stand in the falling snow, hands slipping into my pockets for warmth. I was alone and afraid. Eileen was the answer to that, I thought. She seemed so cool and collected, managing life by herself. That strength of will was what drew me to her, in hindsight. It was thanks to Eileen, Caprice, and our little club that I was able to cope with being alone. The reason that I'm so at peace with myself isn't that I finally learned to live without others. It's because I know I have others to help. Maybe I was too clingy, as Eileen said. I just wanted to know her more, even if she was brusque at the, best of, at the best of times. If she wants to retain her solitude so dearly, though, perhaps it's for the best that things go like this. No, it's not. <laughs> Swallowing the lump in my throat as I push the thoughts aside, I begin to walk once more. It's then that my phone begins to buzz in my pocket. Did Dad forget to say something? Eileen? Why is she calling me now of all times? Should I answer? My phone is shaking in my hand. You better answer that phone, Allison. I pick up the call, but I have no idea what to say. Hello? Allison? Uh. Allison, where are you right now? I think I know where this is going. Thank God. Uh, she doesn't allow me to so much as get a word out, her voice breathless. I'm back home in Utah. No, I mean, I know, so am I. Can we meet somewhere? Where are you exactly? I'm by the Christmas tree in the city square. I love Eileen. I love Eileen. Okay, stay where you are. Ha <laughs> ha, I love Eileen. As the line goes dead, I'm left dumbfounded. Eileen is coming here? Ah, oh, Grace, no! Thank you for stopping in, too. Good night to you, too. I hope you have sweet dreams. Thank you for sticking around. Enjoy the rest of the game. I'm, I'm pretty sure I will. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Eileen. She may not be great with words, but I feel like Eileen is great with actions. I think I know what this action is. <laughs> Within moments, I hear a car door slam loudly. Surely she wasn't looking around for... me. A familiar figure jogs up as quickly as she can in her high boots, her long strides clinking loudly on concrete. As she slowly pulls up to a stop, our eyes finally meet. And so we stand in the city square next to that large tree. Between us, only the falling snow. Eileen is fighting for the relationship. I know, right? I'm just... <laughs> Eileen, why are you... What? You didn't want to see me? I almost respond, but sheer surprise stops me from finding the right words. I end up just hanging my head, not knowing how to respond to her snark in such a situation. 
with my bags weighing down my arms, I set them down. As I look back up, I see Eileen's quip for what it was. A diversion to hide her feelings. She soon realizes I've caught on, her voice turning soft. I found your voice message. I didn't want to leave things as they were. <laughs> oh, so that's why she would... She was acting so weird in the morning because she hadn't heard the message yet. Ah. <laughs> My face flowers into a blush as I grimace from embarrassment. I knew she'd eventually hear it, but it's still embarrassing to think about. Um, I... As I think back to everything that happened, I feel a pang of regret. Once again, I feel myself shrinking away from her. But... haven't I been a pain? Ever since we met, I've only caused you trouble. <laughs> oh, Alison. Yeah, you sure have. There's that sardonic humor again. I can't remember if I ever found it endearing. <sighs> Why do you do that? Uh, it's called a defense mechanism. <laughs> Your first response to everything is to try and brush things off with a quip against someone. Only because everyone sticks their nose into my business. Including me, I guess. <laughs> I follow that up with a dry laugh, yet Eileen's expression doesn't change. I should have expected that, but I feel my chest tighten in response nevertheless. I just... I already had things figured out for myself. As silence reigns, it feels as though we're just repeating the steps we took until now. Nothing's changed. I'm still me, and Eileen is still Eileen. For all I might want to get closer to her, she still keeps pushing me away. She came all the way back here to work things out, yet we're still stuck awkwardly trading barbs. Everything we did together, was it only ever a pain to you? I didn't want to say it, but... I steal my heart to try and force out the words, tightly holding my arm to try and steady myself. I suppose this is all over, then. Allison. No! Yes. Like, Allison, seriously, do you think if it was all over, she would have driven all this way for that? now at this time her shout startles me the point where she recoils a little from my reaction i guess we're both getting flustered i mean that's not what i meant her. reminding us that we're not alone a small child goes running by us as her mother runs after her the distraction gives eileen time to reason through all this while i try my best to ignore the stinging of my heart Everything is so confusing right now. <laughs> Alice is the dumb kind of gay, it seems, ignoring how she's good at maths. It's like... No, it's... It's like she has the book smarts, but she's still so, like, innocent and naive. I feel like this also comes down to the innocence, too. She's like, there's either we're together in the best way or we break up. And it doesn't always have to be that black and white. It's... It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's understandable. She's gay and scared. Yeah. It's, it's all the misunderstandings. And I'm just so glad that they're, they're working through it. Everything is so confusing, but hopefully you can unconfuse it. It's so confusing, but that's why you need to talk and figure out what's going on. Like you're doing right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, high intelligence, low wisdom. That's exactly it. <laughs> it's like... Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a berry salad. <laughs> Everything is so confusing right now. Every day was the same. Living alone in my apartment and working away in that art room. I thought I was fine being alone until... You came into my life and messed everything up. It's just like, 
you you ruined everything by making me realize I love you and want to spend time with you. <laughs> when I thought you might really be gone, I realized how lonely oh, I was. Oh. I meant what I said earlier. I can forget all my worries around you. I don't have to work hard and worry about being my best. I don't have to prove anything. Uh -huh. And I thought... I thought you'd understand. I didn't ever expect you to take my parents' side. I didn't think you'd try to tell me I'm making the wrong choices. My heart sinks. Is that how it looked to her? Like I betrayed her? Yes, Allison, it is. How could I? I've always seen what her parents can't. She's serious about painting. If there's one thing I know about her, it's that. Why would I want to ruin that world of hers that I found so fascinating? That's how it was, Allison, right? But when I thought I might lose you, mm -hmm. I realized you were right. For all I talked big about how you should try new things in college, I was the one pushing everyone away and trying to stay the same. Oh, it's so, it's so painful. It's... As I try to think of how to explain myself, I realize Eileen's eyes have become moist. It's such a strange sight that I completely lose track of what I was going to say. Eileen crying feels so wrong. It feels so, it feels so like unreal. Eileen? I don't want to lose you, Allison. I want to try again. Oh, my heart. My heart. My heart. Moments pass as I think over her words, trying to sift through my emotions. She looks so different now. Her proud stature somehow smaller and more fragile. She's scared. Seeing her in this state puts me on the brink of tears as well. I know my answer already, given how seeing her like this affects me. I only ever wanted to be the person closest to you. Why would I want to ruin that world of yours when it's what brought us together? Let's... Let's try again, Eileen. <laughs> Without warning, she pulls me into an embrace, arms wrapped tightly around me. My brain short circuits as she begins to weep, completely unable to handle the situation. I have no idea what to say as she clutches me tightly to her shuddering body, my own composure barely holding as my arms slowly raise and come around her back. Oh, I see now. Eileen's finally cracked under the pressure. That wall that she carefully built up over so many years finally crumbling down at once. I hold her tightly to me as she cries, trying my best to comfort her. She's here and in my arms. This vulnerable and honest girl is for only me to see. My own eyes only barely stain dry. This Eileen is one I've never seen, but She's the Eileen I've fallen for all over again. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> I feel a lump in my throat as I stroke her hair, trying my best to soothe her. I love you, Allison. I love you. <laughs> Holding her close as her words are muffled into my shoulder, I close my eyes and savor the feeling of her against me. Eileen loves me. This feeling, this warmth throughout my entire body as I hear those words. I guess I really am in love with this hopeless girl. The sad wholesome gates, yeah. Oh. They still have a lot to talk about. They still have a lot to work through. But I think they can. I truly think they can. I'm, I'm like, you, you can see just how much they, they they like genuinely care for each other they they can get through this they can get through this they can get through anything i i believe it and i love you let's do this together 
we're such different people with wildly different backgrounds and worlds of our own. As long as the two of us can let each other in, though, we can build a life together. Side by side, we can start here. It's okay, Eileen. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> this is home. We did it! This is home. Oh my goodness, I am like, full fool. Ah. Oh, my heart is warm again, thank goodness. Uh, you know what, as well? I think I'm glad that they didn't fully resolve everything. As, as like weird as that sounds, I feel like it would have been so unrealistic if they'd just like, managed to get through everything and resolved everything like it would have felt so unrealistic like it, it wouldn't work out like that that felt so genuine <laughs> it's it feels so genuine that i just i'm i'm so glad i'm so glad they it's gonna be hard it's gonna be so hard gonna be so hard oh hey i know i know those names he <laughs> it's gonna be so difficult to work through it's gonna be like a really tricky situation but they're figuring it out they're figuring it out in their way they're... it's not gonna be easy nothing is ever easy nothing's easy at all like relationships are so so hard to to navigate because people are just so different, and because people's brains work in such different ways, you need that communication because you can never fully know what someone is thinking unless you ask them. And like, if you just kind of presume that you know what someone's thinking, you could be wrong. And you could build up like a whole incorrect impression in your head, like Eileen and Allison so beautifully demonstrated in this game where they became so convinced of things that the other person was thinking that weren't true, that it... Oh, it's... <laughs> I love I love this art, this credits art, it's just so beautiful. It's... Oh... What a great game, what a great game! What a... just a really good game. I'm so excited for Twofold. <laughs> oh, I'm really excited for Twofold. I'm, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Ah. It's the bench. It's the bench. It's the bench. Ah, ah look at them. Ah. Oh, my heart. I love them. I love them both so much. Oh, they're so good. They're just such good characters. I what a what an amazing. I, you can't see because my blanket's covering it up, but it says it says Finn in the corner. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me let me move myself out of the way a second. Just Finn. The game is done. I did yes! it. Yes! Oh my gosh! I did it. What an incredible game. What a great game. I love that. Yay! Oh, this is so exciting, Haley. Post credit scene. Post credit scene. Okay, I need a I need a sip of my tea before we do the post credit scene. Ha 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 ha. I got my tea. Oh my gonna see Haley? I wanna see Haley. Hello. Uh huh. Haley, there we go. I was wondering where you were. I did it. We got to meet Haley. Yay! It's a long time coming too. Do you know if Millie knows yet? I haven't talked to her since this morning. Ooh, I can't wait to see her reaction. 
I'm gonna say something as soon as she gets home. Oh? Don't you think maybe she should hear it from them? Aww, but I really want to tell her. I get it. But, you know... Millie! What's this? What's this? Hello. Got some stuff. Welcome back. Took a while. There's so many people out there today. Guess it's the post-holiday rush. That's not... Millie! Millie, have you heard the news? Hmm? I was at my dad's shop half the day. And... And what? Car trouble again? Unfortunately. Maybe it's time for a new one. That's what Dad said, too. He even offered to help pay for it. I was gonna say then, yeah, just just get a new car. Car trouble? Just buy a new one. You, you, money? Nah. You don't sound too thrilled. But what would you do with this one? Trash it? Well, sell it, probably. If it still functions. I don't want to, though. Yeah, you can't! Huh? Why not? I'd rather not accept something like that from him. He's already given me so much. And you can't just abandon it! Sure you can. Just leave it on the side of the road. <laughs> the difference between them all here is so great. That car is like family. As I said, if I was upgrading, I'd at least try to sell it. They're all so different. I love this. Hold on. Let's go back to what Capri said. Yeah! Listen, you've had that car since high school. Think of all the places it's taken us. <laughs> She's sentimental over the car, huh? We have spent quite a bit of time in that car. And besides... It's like family? Dad and I worked on it together a Aww. lot. I'm kind of attached to the little thing. Yeah, she's also sentimental over the car. That makes sense. Exactly! I know the feeling, but you can't hold on to everything forever. I know. I guess. <laughs> I like how even Caprice is like begrudgingly. Eh, I suppose you're right. <laughs> While we're on the topic, maybe some other people here should think about getting their licenses. Um... <laughs> Cold out. I'm a supporter of public transit, actually. Nice. Yes, that! Me too! Nice. <laughs> oh, really? Then you won't mind taking the tram from now on? We like riding in your car, though. It's fun going together! So much for that. <laughs> At least consider it. It'd be good for the both of you. Especially you, Caprice. I know you're getting your new club members to drive you around places now. Um, yeah, she is. <laughs> hey! They want to go just as much as me! You sure about that? Oh, really? Did they say that? More or less. Plus, I've helped them out too, you know. Thanks to me. Rabbit is <laughs> blooming in the art room. <laughs> I love Caprice is just fully taking the credit for that. She's just like, oh yeah, and thanks to my art club, I have managed to create romance. <laughs> How much of that was you? Definitely all of it. Mm, Fifty. <laughs> no, at least sixty percent. Oh, I, I love Caprice so much. <laughs> really. Only 60? Please, just promise me. As much as I love you two, I won't always be there for you to rely on. You're not going anywhere, are you? Don't worry. We promise. Right, Caprice? Yes, ma'am! Thank you. I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. After all, I suppose you'll still be needing rides to class this semester. <laughs> yeah, Eileen, this doesn't leave this room. Caprice. Already forgotten that conversation, probably. <laughs> she, only, she only saved the important parts, you know. It's almost here. I'm getting excited. 
I'm not really. Uh, I've got a full slate of classes. Plus, there's a club to run. I'm gonna recruit so many more members! At least double the size! I don't even want to think about it right now. Are you too hungry? Starving. You gonna cook, Millie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mood. That's a big mood. Take out? Not it! What about the food you just bought? Today was exhausting. How about you, Haley? Uh, let's just order some. Yeah, take out. I figured it was a takeout kind of mood. Hmm. Oh, why don't we go out somewhere? Take the car together? Weren't you just saying there's a lot of people out? Yes, but it's nice out, too. Oh, yeah! So, about that news... Let's talk about it over dinner. Okay, oh, you drive! I call shotgun! I'm the only one who can drive. <laughs> and we're very appreciative. I'm looking forward to removing my tire chains. It's a little warmer today, so the snow is starting to let up. Finally. It's about time! Oh! Oh, I love that so much! That's so good! Ah! That's so great! Oh my god! The menu changed. The menu changed. The menu changed. The menu changed. Oh, look at him. Look at him. I love this. I love this. Ah! Oh, it's so... <laughs> I love this. Also, yeah, the voice credits, too! I I love that like, I recognize so many of the names from like other visual novels and things. I'm like, I, I, I know that, that voice actor. I'm the <laughs> I recognize that name. It's so pretty. Right, let's go extras. Let's have a quick look. Uh, gallery. Oh, it's got all the CGs here. We've got guest art. <gasps> so much guest art. <gasps> oh, I got an achievement for that too. Nice. <laughs> I got an achievement. Right, how many achievements are there actually? Hold on. Bum, 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 bum. <gasps> oh, I have all the achievements except for one. I don't know where the patch is. Uh, that can wait, wait until afterwards. Uh, I'll get that other achievement at a later date. You know what? Uh, start at the twofold stream. We'll start twofold next week, but before I do, I will get the, the secret achievement for this. <laughs> but oh, it's so good. It really is just like so good at setting things up for twofold. It's perfect. Also, I'm. Hello. Hold on, I've, I've lost my mouse. Where's my mouse? There we go. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. There's so much guest art too. They're all so beautiful. Oh, look at it all. There's so much. I love all the art. It's so pretty. I'm just looking at like the thumbnails. Because it's already getting really late and I'm super, super tired. I just looked at the Addy one because I instantly recognized her art. <laughs> but they're so good. I love it all. It's so good. Oh, there's a jukebox too. It's got all the music. Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm so glad. But yeah, I think that's a good spot to leave it at. I'm so glad they worked it out. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, this creates such a perfect setting for Twofold. I'm so excited. And that's going to start next week. Next week is going to be the official start of Twofold Tuesdays. I will never pronounce it the same way, but it's okay. Also, Moonlight Shadow, thank you for the follow. 
Welcome, welcome. Thank you for deciding to stick around. Yeah, I'm... I will get the achievement next time. I'm just way too tired to, like, actually find the patch right now. <laughs> I'm getting a little EP. I'm also a little emotionally drained from that argument, too. Not gonna lie, so... That feels like a good spot to leave it at, so I shall... Bloop. I'll head on over to here and we can find a raid target. Let's see who's around to send a raid onto. It's so funny, I'm not used to streaming at this time on a Tuesday. I don't know. Well, it's technically Wednesday now. <laughs> it's technically already Wednesday for me, so... Let's have a look. <gasps> I can raid Mia. I can raid Mia. I can raid Mia. I can raid Mia. I'm raiding Mia. I'm sending the raid on to Mia Sova, who's doing an ASMR stream as part of her two-year subathon. And I want to raid Mia, so I don't know how long she's going to stream for. So I want to make sure I... I... I can get the chance to raid her. I never get to raid her because our stream times are so different. But I love Mia so much. She's so good. She's great. Amazing voice, amazing cover out now. Check out Mia Sova Villain on YouTube. It's really, really good. I'm gonna send the raid over her way. And then, fingers crossed, I can get a bit of sleep tonight. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, either way, I'll be back tomorrow for more puzzle times. I'll be doing some more puzzling. I'm gonna, I want to try and finish uh, Magnesium 173 because the puzzles in that game are so clever. It is such an intriguing game. I'm, I really love the mechanics to the puzzles in it. It's so good. So I really wanted to play more of that. So that's my plan for tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm having a busy day. I'm starting a new game with Xander. Well, it's, it's technically an older game, but you know what I mean. And then later in the evening, I'm gonna be joining Sylphie for their Donothon. And then I'll be back on Sunday for Outer Wilds as well. But for now, I think it is time for EP. <laughs> but this game has been so good. I'm so excited for Twofold next week. It's gonna be so good. Ah, I'm so sleepy. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.